Hey, everybody. This is Jim, host of the Western Huntsman Podcast. Just a quick announcement before we kick off this episode. First and foremost, it is week two of uh, March 2023, and I wanted to address some of the audio malfunctions we had on last week's episode with my buddy Tom Schneider regarding the wolf discussion. The biggest thing is I, I just wanted to clarify when you're recording remotely, sometimes crazy things happen, and I don't, uh, I'm not technical enough to know what. Um, so if you noticed, if you listened to the entire episode, towards the end of it, we, uh, it sounded like we were like talking over each other. And I just wanted to clarify, like Tom was not talking over me and I was not talking over him. Somehow the audio got jumbled and uh, I couldn't fix it. And so, Sorry about that. Hopefully, the message of the uh, the, the the episode still came through uh, as good as it could have. It was only like the last I don't know five or ten minutes or so of that episode, but uh, I just wanted to clarify that so you know you guys don't think that uh, both me and Tom were were purposely talking over each other. It was just the way the audio came out for some reason, and that's just what happens when you re- record remotely sometimes with some of this technology that uh, they're trying to make better, and sometimes uh, in the <laughs> in the effort of trying to make it better, it doesn't turn out that great. So that's that. Also, I want to talk to you about Hoffman Boots. This family has a history of shoemakers dating back for generations, and they make Hoffman boots, the Explorers and the Summits, all the hunting boots and line boots, and or, I'm sorry, lineman boots, pack boots, winter boots, all that kind of stuff. So go check it out at hoffmanboots.com. Uh, I really, really like this company. It's that American story that I, I've talked about many times where, you know, there was a dream uh, that they put the dream in motion. And here we have this fantastic company based here in North Idaho that makes uh, the, the best hunting boots, in my opinion, on the market. I love my explorers. Check it out and use promo code HUNTSMAN10, all caps lock. And then also, guys, go check out Eastmans.com. Eastmans is going to be the uh, the hub where you can find Tag Hub and you can find the Mule Deer course and the magazines and a ton of hunting content. So go check that out at Eastmans.com. And don't forget about Beat 907 because bear season is right around the corner. So if you could bait bears and you are into baiting bears, I uh, definitely go check out Batum 907. That is my go-to bait company for bear season, spring bear and bear uh, bear baiting, because uh, it just works. I mean, the stuff works. There's no there. You guys saw if you've if following along the last couple of years, you've seen all the bears that have been attracted to my bait sites because of Batum 907. So check it out, guys. This is a long episode. Buckle up for it. There is a lot of incredible information in here, and uh, I really hope you guys get through it and it. And uh, it, it gets the wheels turning and makes you think about where we are at as a community of hunters, where what our future looks like, all that kind of stuff. So uh, buckle up. Here we go. There exists a threat from anti-hunting groups to politicians trying to give our land away, and we won't stand for it. Those vast western landscapes provide the space for our wildlife to thrive and a place for hunters and anglers to fuel the fire that sparks their soul. In this show... We share our love of hunting, fishing, and conservation. Here, we provide the foundation to meet these threats through passion and the grit of the American outdoorsman. Welcome to the Western Huntsman Podcast. guys uh different kind of introduction this week because we are back for our uh winter is hunting conservation discussions with chris Rowe of row hunting resources and guy duplanche of western contours right here on the line and so uh before we kick this off guys i just i wanted to have based on some of the the, the other episodes we've released which just to kind of recap we released episode number one back in december on on my podcast and then chris released released number two i believe that first week of january guy you released uh number three end of january beginning of february i can't remember yeah somewhere right there yeah and so here we are march march 3rd uh i believe we're all going to release these ones or, or this one number four on all the platforms um and and just try to get it out to you guys but just based on some of the comments what what i'm hoping we can achieve for some of you that have sent 
concerns or messages as to what we're talking about. First of all, nobody tells me, nobody tells Guy, nobody tells Chris uh, what we will and won't record and put out. Uh, and, and actually, I shouldn't speak for you guys. That For, for me, nobody's going to tell me. You got it um, right. So. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just not it's just not going to happen. So uh, I, I appreciate your concerns, but it, it's, just, it's just not going to happen. Uh, number two is, you know, when I was uh, when I was a kid, my grandpa used to say, um, you know, never trust a man that doesn't cuss. And uh, I, I've uh, throughout throughout uh, my, my podcast career, so to speak. Uh, I've gone back and forth and I've, I've, uh, there's been a few times where I've said, God damn it. You know, and, and I say that all the time. Um, you know, and I've got, I've, I've received a couple of messages from you guys regarding that term. And I want to explain something because it ties into how I want you to look at these episodes and how you, uh, need to think a little deeper. It is my, and this is my, um, perception and this is my opinion and this is my value. So I'm not trying to push this on you, but when I use the term, God damn it, I'm not taking the Lord's name in vain, folks. When I I want you to think deeper on that, taking the Lord's name in vain is when a terrorist straps a bomb to his chest and runs into a crowd of innocent people yelling, praise Allah, or a preacher that takes advantage of young kids in the name of God, or somebody who takes your money. In the name of God. I'm not trying to get religious here. I'm trying to get you to think on a on a deeper level. So when I stub my toe and I say, God damn it, that's not taking the Lord's name in vain, in my opinion. And so I appreciate the messages. But I, I, again, um, for me, and I'm speaking just for myself, I am who I am. I'm, I'm going to keep saying it. And I want I, I, I'm hoping that some of you will take what I'm saying here with a grain of salt and from the sense of thinking deeper as to what we are talking about here. Think of this stuff on a deeper level. Guys, I didn't mean to open it with such a deep, uh, deep topic there, but it really bothers me. Some of this stuff really bothers me. So um, just real quick, guys, so that I can lighten the mood after that, you know, I, I went off with that. I need let's let's go ahead and just play a quick ad here. You guys OK with that? Play on, brother. Play on. All right, guys, we're back. Did you guys not hear the ad? No. I didn't hear a word, bro. Oh, you didn't hear. I thought we were that. supposed to be quiet. Yeah, oh so no! Did I. Really. I was like, I was waiting. No, <laughs> the dog. It's like, it's like it, it's just, you're ready to, on a prayer. You're just like, okay, I'm waiting for the amen. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So, uh, you, uh, uh, what what I did is I, I I thought that I'd shared the screen and the audio with you because y- you were supposed to hear yeah. the ad. No, so no. Uh, you're going to have to hear it when we play it, and you're going to get a kick out of it. All right. <laughs> what have you guys been up to? Well, I'm just gonna have to I'm just gonna have to roll with it at this point because you didn't hear it. So uh what have you guys been up to these uh last month? Guy, you've been pumping or I'm I'm sorry, Chris, you've been pumping out a few episodes. Yeah, I did a deep dive. <clears throat> I've been doing a deep dive on this stupid wolf thing in Colorado and just getting depressed. So um yeah, yeah thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, the the the, re, the reality is is I'm I'm just pissed at myself and it, it's not that I mean and I said it today in my podcast uh, you know I did the second podcast talking about that to uh, release it today you know I'm a non-resident I, I don't live in Colorado anymore it's 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 not my issue it's not my fight technically you know what I mean it's 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 it's, it's nothing really have a, a say in. Um, especially given it was a ballot initiative and it's the voters of Colorado and then it's supposed to go to the wildlife commission, et cetera. And so I didn't pay close attention to it. And then I, I trusted and and I know better. I, I, I know better, but I trusted what I heard from sportsman's groups that, you know, this was just, Oh, you know, it, it, you know, oh, the people of Colorado, they, they want wolves. And it was just, they want wolves and, Oh, you, you want to reintroduce wolves. And so, I thought that was just what it was. It was like a surface level. Oh, the people want, you know, somebody in their backyard sitting around a, 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 a fire pit to sit one night was like, you know, it'd be cool. Let's, let's see if we can do yeah. this. And, and yeah, let's have wolves And that. And, and it was far, it was, it, it couldn't have been further from the truth. And so the, my, the thing that I look at it, I'm like, 
if I'd been paying attention then and, and had I been able to do a deep dive on some of this stuff, could I have picked up the phone on uh, to with a couple of people and could we've had more, you know, different conversations and could I've given my, you know, experience to some of the people that were going to be involved with this process and, and would it, and would it even have mattered anyway? You know, would a, would have they listened to the, what I had to say? B, even if they did, would it have mattered? I don't know, but this, this, this issue was not what was put out to the general sportsman's sphere of yeah. information. Yeah. This, this is, this, this wasn't a half assed yet. This is, this is an absolute, it's my opinion. Again, it's my opinion. And, and I hope, and I hope history, I hope like 10 years from now, people are like, Chris Rowe is a freaking dumbass. Like, dude, this guy was freaking out there and he was freaking wrong. I hope I'm wrong, man. I really want to be wrong because I don't know, man. If, I, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not, then Colorado elk hunting, the, 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 the Colorado hunting, let alone, you know, like, yeah, Colorado hunting and then especially Colorado elk hunting will, is, is from here on out. It's, it's never going to be the same. It's, yeah. it's done. It's done. Yeah. This is this is an indictment on. I mean, the people that drafted the legislation uh, that 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 put the ballot on the on the uh, before the Colorado voters and drafted the the legislation were the exact people that have been fighting U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming these the, how many decades? And they're they I think they see the writing on the wall where. They're running out of legal arguments to make to shut down Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. They, they've yeah. still got a couple more up their sleeve. They're still and and they're shrewd, man. They're good. The activists, everybody wants to you know pitch a fit about activists and, and pretend that they're stupid, idiotic, and blah blah blah. They're not. They they just have a different value set than you. But the the problem is is they're, they're not stupid. They're not idiotic. They're better than you. Yeah. They're smarter. They're more organized. They have more money. And and when I say smarter, I mean they are legal smarter. They are policy smarter. They're they're administrative process smarter. They're they know they know their way around a courtroom and laws and legal loopholes and the administrative process. I mean they've got it inside out, upside down, and backwards. And and we don't. And they and- track the history of victories and failures for the oh, yeah. last four yeah. or five decades in this realm and use that to advance the thing. And that's why it looks like the way it does in Colorado right now. Well, and that's the thing is, is these guys, they've still got a couple more things that they're working on, uh, trying to challenge U.S. Fish and Wildlife, uh, trying to change what's going on in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. But I think they're running out. I think they, they realize they are starting to run out of options and they're, and they're not going to be able to shut down the wolf hunts, uh, entirely. And so Colorado, they knew they had a term limited governor who leans their way. They, and with all this woke stuff, I mean, again, Colorado governor is on the far left. Uh, I mean, his lifestyle is on the far left. His ideology is on the far left. And, and a lot of the people he surrounds himself are on the extreme far left, mm-hmm. especially on the environmentalist side. I mean, hell, the governor's, you know, what is it? The first gentleman, the governor's, I, I, I and I'm not being rude. I don't, is it husband, white? I don't know. Partner, I life partner, know. whatever. Yeah. Uh, he's gay. I mean, his life partner there is a self proclaimed animal activist. And so, um, I think that the people saw what was going on around the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and they were getting frustrated. They knew that they had a governor that, that agreed with them. He, the governor's term limited. And quite honestly, there's been some things that I could see where the governor would basically want to extend the middle finger to some people that push back against him. And this is, this was their time to come in. And my opinion, make wildlife and especially ungulate management. Ungu- I, I, I won't even say wildlife management, ungulate management in their yeah. image. They're going to, there, there will yeah. be no wolf hunting, but this is a, this is not about the wolf. This is about 
we're going to sh- we are going to take all the sins that we of all the hunters and all the egregious stuff that you know I'm not saying it's egregious but from their perspective all the evils that they watched happen in Idaho, Montana and Wyoming regarding the wolf and they are going to use Colorado as the as the sacrificial lamb they, they're going to stamp that evil out and they are going to remake ungulate management in in their image in Colorado. And I don't think it's yeah. just going to stop at all ungulates. It's going to be, it'll be wolves. It's going to be elk, deer, moose. But I wouldn't be surprised if they start trying to pull some stuff with mountain lions as well. But it, yeah. Colorado's in for a, a real, real hurt, I think. Yeah, I I I think that you, when you, when you express that uh, you're, you know, you hope that you're wrong, um, I, I don't think you are because I, you know, even just reading through the draft management plan for, for the state of, or, or I'm sorry, Colorado, it is, it, it, it's, it's like kind of what you said. It's like they've run out of steam for the Northern Rocky Mountain region and this fight with, uh, you know, wolf hunting and trapping here in, in Idaho and Wyoming and Montana. Uh, and, and so they're like turning their focus to places like Colorado and other places where they can, uh, you know, kind of sink their teeth in, if you will. Uh, but if you if you read through the draft management plan, there's nothing in there that that talks about down the road with an establishment of packs. We're going to have hunting. We're going to have trapping. There's nothing that talks about that. In fact, it's the opposite. It says, um, you know, controlling wolf numbers in the future is going to be uh, everything's going to they're going to try everything. And trapping and hunting are going to be the last resort. And no. And so, no, no, what's that? Trapping right. and hunting aren't even on the table. They, they that's that's well, where, gone. Where did they did they get rid of that part? Conflict management well, when conflicts occur. Stop reading. Okay, because they, the the meeting from last week, they nixed that phase four language. Oh, did they really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So wait until the wait until the final language is out. But yeah, no. So two things. Number one, this is the thing that frustrates the the, and I understand from an agency standpoint. Uh, I'm going to qualify it right now. I understand from an agency standpoint why the agency biologists and managers did this. And I can understand from the, okay, so people that are not familiar with this, the people who generated the the management plan, the in, reintroduction plan, reintroduction and management plan, it came from two bodies of people. It came from what would they call the technical working group, Okay, the TWIG, mm-hmm. TWG, that was a group of biologists in the Colorado Parks and Wildlife Agency, as well as folks that worked in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming on the wolf reintroduction up there. So they they had former people. You know, they, these are all professional biologists that have direct experience uh, doing some of this stuff. Yeah, that's the technical side. On the other side was the sport. The, I almost did it again. The stakeholder advisory, not the sportsman's advisory group, the stakeholder advisory group. And the stakeholder advisory group was made up of hunters, outfitters, ranchers, and the biggest diehard, I mean, egregious wolf advocates that you could imagine. Because why? It's a stakeholder. So obviously Mm -hmm. the wolf advocates are the ones that put it on the ballot. So of course they're going to have a seat at the table. The sportsmen that were involved with that, they wanted to try to hang on to some semblance of the idea that there would be, you know, manage from a hunting standpoint. We know that generally speaking, you have to manage these things. And and everybody knows that with wolves, you need to manage wolves. And so in the plan, in the discussion, there was always this effort to try to say, we're going to have hunting. As part of this, uh, when the wolves in Colorado are recovered, we're going to have, we're going to try to have hunting. Yeah. The problem is that was a non-starter to begin with because when the wolf advocates drafted Colorado revised statute 33-2-105.8, that is the statute that, that, that mandates and guides the, the state law. That guides the 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 progress here. Yeah, it's in statute. It's it's in it's in state law that the wolf is a non game species. So any hunting in this discussion from the Wildlife Commission is is not is a non starter. And it's a all non starter. Yeah, and all it did is piss off 
the 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 wolf act activists because they and they testified last week to this. They're like, no, we know what the freaking hell we we know what we wrote. We know what we wrote and we wrote it very carefully and we know what our intent was and we know damn well what that line says. And that line says it's non game. So you putting fucking hunting in here is fucking bullshit and you're not going to, we're not going to allow it to happen. Well, guess what? To get the governor, he's stacking that wildlife commission now with a vast majority of activists, basically activists. I mean, yep. an, animal activists, anti hunter type people <clears throat> to where. No, they they were not going to uh, touched in and reading and the other folks there that are I mean they are not they no way were they going to allow that language to even be a part of the plan and so that got pulled out. And yeah. So it, it, it'll okay, never, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't it, know that. That it, it happened. It, that happened last week. It you know they they rewrote that whole last phase four paragraph. Interesting. And for me, the thing that was frustrating is like I was like guys. How, how do you not understand, like from the professionals, from the technical working group, from the, the stakeholder advisory group, the, the landowners that were there and the sportsmen that were there. And then especially from the agency folks, I understand your desire to want to keep hunting as a, as an option. You already lost it. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like going, you, you lost the game and now you want to go out. In, in preparation for your next game or the next event, you're, you you want to go back and redo, like you want to, you, the game's over, but you want to go back and review the footage or something. It's like, God, the game. Well, I mean, the whole, the whole conversation is like that too. It's like, you know, we could sit here, uh, you know, if you, if you pull up that original plan and it shows what counties voted in favor of wolf reintroduction versus which counties didn't, it's massively uh, out of whack with, I, I mean, the population centers are obviously, in the green, right? The green areas. And then it's the red right. is a rural and the rest. And, and those are the people that voted against it. But if. And I the, love, and I love and, the and, fact that they say green, not blue, but that's exactly. I know, I know. It's, uh, but that's what the breakdown is. Those are the blue counties. And, and the, the insanity of the whole thing is now we could sit here and bitch about how that went wrong and how we, we, uh, you know, lost the ability to go back and, and prevent this boat vote from even taking place. But the problem with that is, is it's going to be a waste of time. It's here. Yes. And and that whole podcast that I just put out this week with Tom Snyder talking podcast, man. that we we were trying to which I apologize, folks. I don't know what happened to the audio at the end of that. But like Tom and I all of a sudden started talking over each other. And now we weren't doing that on purpose. It was the audio got mixed up. But anyway, um, th- that the premise of, of talking to Coloradans as to what to expect with wolf reintroduction and how it's going to affect like moose and elk and, and other ungulate species and then down the road. Uh, managing them through hunting and trapping, that part of it is irrelevant. It's not going to happen. The, the, the and, hunting, yeah. And, and that's, the, that's the thing that frustrated me. It was like, okay, guys, you can look just north. That, like, they had, there was a clear path forward, according to the Fish and Wildlife Service. They achieved that and immediately got slammed by lawsuits from the activists. They got through all that murder, that all that bullshit. Eventually, they came out the other end to allow hunting, uh, hunting of wolves. Immediately got challenged in court on that. Yeah, like I, I don't understand. Totally, I don't understand how it got missed. That it's it was written in statute as non-game, so a commission action cannot overturn. State law and and the fact that the 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 state attorney at the commission meeting was sitting there saying, "Well, you know, we're reserving the right to review. We kind of need to review." I'm like, "What is there? There's no review. What? Like, why are you yeah. even? Stru- All you're doing is just fueling the fire for the activists. Yeah. You're not going to win because even if Colorado and I don't even think Colorado will get to the the stage three or phase three for they're not going to get there for many many years." Because the activists, and again, the the Wildlife Commission isn't going to let them. But um, it if if they get to phase three, and the state is contemplating on going into phase four, they're immediately going to get slapped with lawsuits. Yeah. So you don't even know what's going to happen as you come out of the lawsuits. And as you saw right there, I mean, Colorado 
animal activists know that they can go to the ballot box and and any time they want to, and they can dip into that well. They've threat they did it with the the bear issue, and that's why you know Colorado lost a bunch of its options for bear hunting. They've always threatened to do it with the mountain lions. They mm-hmm. just did it and achieved it with the wolf issue. So even if we got to phase three, the only thing that the activists would do would go straight back to the ballot box and they would go straight to those blue counties. Those counties that you see in that plan, right? That that's who runs the state of Colorado. The, oh, yeah, the other absolutely. red areas are irrelevant. And yep. and I joked, I joked slash joked about that in the in my first podcast. I don't even know why Colorado politics even spends money in the rest of the state. Like just spend money in those blue because those two I I heard that one yeah was, those, those two handful, areas yep those handful of counties run the entire state politics wise so that's all you need yeah. to win and so I, I'm like I don't even know why we why did we even why did we stir the shit pot and because the reason why we had so many people at that out of state people and and special interest groups testifying at that commission meeting last week that were so rapidly it was directly in response to the sportsman dialogue because the plant the draft plan came out and it gave this inkling of hope that there might be something in phase four that's, and that's all it was was an inkling this, and the sportsman just spun up and we're like, no, this is bullshit. We need to have honey. We need to have honey. And so all of the public comment from sportsmen are like, we need to add honey, add hunting, add hunting. Of course, the people that wrote the, the freaking legislation and ran this ballot issue, they knew that they put it in there that it's non-game. You can't add hunting in now. So all it is, is it artificially created a fight. And now we got more people. It it it's just a train wreck, man. And it's man, like that is a train wreck. Sportsmen need to get smart here. And this is the thing that's frustrating me is because it's like we need people that are – I don't know. I need to have some conversation with some of the folks that I trust that have been involved with this this from the get-go. But it's like, guys, you don't un- – how do you not understand who you're going against? Like I, at this point, how do you not understand how they think? How, how have you not gone through 33-2-105.8 and red line for line and then be – like do – like like I did. Like well, I did in just freaking circle, like, where is it? Like, we, like, I mean, we, like every, oh, yeah. every yellow line, it's like, yep, yep, yep. That's there. That's there. That's it. some of these lines. I've got them circled and I've got them highlighted in yellow. Some of the lines are absolutely just they're they're housekeeping, you know, administrative legal stuff that needs to be in there. But like I mentioned on, on paragraph one that, you know, one sub section or uh, sub paragraph three, once restored to Colorado, gray wolves will help restore a critical balance in nature. Why the hell is that be? Why, why is that in there? That's in there because this is the premise for having the wolves there in the first place. It's not about bringing a, an iconic species back on the landscape. No. It's the long They're game. To bring a balance to nature. What balance are we talking about? I was going to say, you mentioned that today in your podcast, which I haven't yes. quite finished, but but that's it, it was such a good question. What balance? What does that even mean? I mean, it means we, that's their long game. We talked about it two episodes ago. Yeah, yeah that's it the is long a, game. Yeah, it's it's long the same game. protections. But their that they definition put on of balance is different than ecological balance. But it's, but it's not even and a so, definition. It's just a play on words. Mm-hmm. So the people that really don't know are blinded to the bullshit. So but what about you? Same protection for mountain lions, same protection with bobcats, limiting bear seasons, taking spring seasons away. It's the same fucking shit. It's their long game. Sorry. No, 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 you're good. We you're good. we have been pathetic about stepping up as sportsmen and changing how we're fighting the game. All the fucking three-letter blah, blah, blahs, right, have the same sad fucking song. Excuse my language, goddammit, goddammit, goddammit. That goes back to the comments <laughs> earlier. They have the same sad song that we've been hollering for 10, 15, 20 years with no change and no advancement and no particular attention paid to the battle we're fighting and the escalation in that fucking battle. That's why we're in this fucking position. And it's pathetic. I've been sitting here trying to figure out for weeks. I read that damn wolf thing. I I don't know. What was that? Three weeks ago, Chris. And I messaged Chris and I'm like, dude, I. As a as a layman, as a just an average fucking dude, it's like where do you start? But I went through three hundred pages, and 
And then I see this, I can't remember where I see it, where I see the three letter agencies, few of them saying, oh, we're done. We're not going to be on, uh, we're not going to deal with the commission. We, we give up. And they're fucking walking away. But in the meantime, they're getting funding from the sportsmen of the state and membership dollars. And these fucking organizations, when it gets hard, are deciding that they're going to fucking walk away from the fight when, when sportsmen of the state need them the most. Ooh, okay, that's my rant. Sorry. Yeah, yeah no, it, it, you're you're fucking, not you're not wrong, guy. But I mean, we we'd already bullshit. by the time that came out, and by the time they walked away, we'd already been outflanked by these activists. They had their shit together. This stuff was I written get it. in there I prior. Get it, but, but and going it's back like, to the point. When oh, the fuck are we going to step up? Absolutely. It's, when are we ooh. going to behave in such an organized, well funded, and well thought out way as these activists are? Because right now, I mean, we are getting our asses kicked. That we are, we are getting our asses kicked. And it's, it's because of what Chris was just talking about and what, what we've been talking about all winter. We focus on the wrong things and we, we, I, I think we, we try to pass the buck and act like somebody else is going to take care of it. Who? Well, yeah, then you my, know, and then who, fucking who? people criticize us and Chris and Aaron and, and, oh, for having oh, yeah. the fucking conversations. I know. Yeah, it's it's just on <laughs> all these nasty emails I got and phone calls and text messages and DMs. And okay, so it's so like, okay, why why? Okay, so honestly, let, let's let's pause a second. We we can let's yeah. we, we can we can Gen to the wolf thing here in a second. But what exactly? I mean, seriously, what criticisms are have you been getting? Like, what have you been hearing? Because I only had one individual reach out to me and was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, like, are you talking about like, like, wolf, or like, like coyote contests or something like, and, and you had a conversation with them. That's like it. Like, but I'm hearing from like everybody around me. Well, what's going on here? What's going on there? Like, what's got, what's got, I'm like, so seriously, like what, what are people's, what are the issues that you're, what, what, what messaging, uh, how the fuck are you, what, what, angst do people have i, I think that uh, like if if you were to ask me as a summary if if i took all the messages that i've received as a summary is we are going against the grain of what they consider the norm good that, okay that's good. that's how i summarize it <laughs> all right that's my life that's my whole that's my whole, MO, that's, that's, that's my whole, that's my whole premise again yeah, yeah. yeah. what have i what have I said? How- and I, you know, you know how people are. They get set in, and you know, this is how we've been doing it. This is what we've been saying to sportsmen. This is how we've been funding the sportsmen, and blah, blah blah blah. And, and, we're and, and all of a sudden, losing. these dudes come along. These dudes come along and start kind of breaking down that argument and and ripping it apart. And and it's like we're bruising their egos, you know. Okay, and so, and I, okay. I get it. Then then I then I know exactly what you're talking about. So in other words, these are the people that want to be out on the front porch screaming the praises of how great and glorious and and morally pious the sportsman community is and how great all you know the the North American model of wildlife conservation and how we brought things back from the brink of blah 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 blah, blah and how great and glorious we are and, and, and we are holy and we walk on water and uh, that's what they want they, they want to be out in the front of the house and 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 doing all that stuff that's fine but like i've said before it's not my quote i think it was reagan or whatever but if everybody in the room is in agreement somebody's not thinking and yep. if 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 no one is gonna sit, if no one else is gonna speak up and and think and 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 provide a different take, I'll take one for the team. Sorry, I, I'd be happy to take one too. And, yeah, we're, and, yeah, all three of us well, are here. And, and 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 the same people that are complaining are parroting what we are saying in these episodes on on other platforms. Correct. <laughs> yes. Correct. I've watched that are too. Are fucking I, parroting I, I, it. I yeah. watched that too. I'm like, and it's like, okay. are you kidding me? Right. Like, so you, someone called and said, Hey, can, you know, do you think you guys should be saying this? So basically censor our opinion on the matter because it doesn't feel warm and fucking fuzzy. Dude, I wore, I don't give a flying chili bean fart about the warm and fuzzy. If we cannot be honest, flying chili bean fart. fart. I've never heard that one. I'm going to write heard that it now, too. brother. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. <laughs> have you ever, basically what that ends up being, have you ever seen somebody that's chewing uh, sunflower seeds and they go spin and it just kind of, just the sea goes <laughs> flying out? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's the chili bean flower. Right? Yeah, that's it right there. You know, with, no, with it, uh, <laughs> this stuff that, with the negative commentary that, that, that we've received, you know, I, I've got to say that the amount 
I, I, it's minuscule compared to the the positive and and the messages. I and I forwarded a lot of them to you guys. You know, I've had people message me. They're, they're like, you know, I've been. I feel like I've just been blind going through yes. life as a yeah. hunter. I didn't know this was going on. I didn't know this was th- this kind of issue. I appreciate you guys opening uh, my eyes to uh, the problems yeah. that we face. And and it really my one of my favorite ones was. Uh, you know, all I think about is I, I just want to get my, um, I want to get a tag and I want to go hunting next year. I don't think about that part. And I appreciate you guys letting us know what we need to think about because I, I've never thought of it as a problem. And, and now he's thinking about it. He didn't think about it before. Now he's thinking about it. That's what we're going for. Uh, we are not sitting here on a pedestal acting like we have all the answers and we have all the, the the knowledge as to how to solve all these problems. What we are saying nor are we begging for agreement we're, from everyone. We're, we're, and we're not, the board. And, and we're not begging for agreement. What we are saying is what is what is happening isn't working. It's not very effective. We need to come up with a new game plan as a community. And and again, to to quote uh, Reagan there, Chris Rowe, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure he's the one that said, "If not us, then who? Uh, and if not now, then when?" Uh, we we something has to be done. We are on the brink of a a, a a complete collapse in the lifestyle that we know as we know it, and and we're seeing it play out, and especially on these West Coast states. And so it's time, it's time, and so now it's time to start talking about solutions, because what what we've been what we've been doing, it, it folks, it ain't working. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, Chris. No, 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 uh, it, no, it, no. It was perfect. Um, the other thing too. That I so I agree with you wholeheartedly. Like I, it's ninety nine to one. Um, the exact same thing that you said. The messages yeah. that I've been getting here. Please, dear Lord, keep going. You know, it's about damn time we start doing that. And then all the way to the the ones you said where, and I get these just massive, you know, direct messages or whatever. Mm-hmm. People are like, "Holy hell, I never even thought about this, and I didn't think about that, and now I'm now you got me thinking here." And it's like that. That's I, I don't care. You know. And, and there are some people that are like, well, quit bitching and just, you know, tell us what to do. What are the solutions? Guys, I, I, I might make some suggestions, but the, but the reality is, is I, I might not, I probably don't. And I'm confident that I do not have all the answers, but I'm, I, I want to, if nothing else with us three, with Aaron, me on my, whatever. If nothing else, I just want to cause somebody to think because maybe if you're thinking, you're the one who actually comes up with the idea. If if you had never been pushed into a direction to to actually think outside of your comfort zone and and what you've been accustomed to, you may have never stumbled on it. But but the number of eureka moments that the average Joe Schmedley has had over history that has made a, a incredible mm-hmm. mark on civilization subsequent to that eureka moment, that light bulb going off, going oh holy shit, wait a minute. That's the point. So I, I'm not saying I'm going to have the pro- the. None of us are saying we have the answers. I can provide suggestions, it, it, at least for some of my opinions. But I'm hoping that somebody, as they're thinking through these things, maybe you have a different connection. Maybe you have a different uh, life uh, experience set. Or maybe you're going to be able to pull from some things, and and maybe through the combination of three, four, five different conversations by five different people, all of a sudden a solution manifests itself, and you're like, "Oh shit, this is exactly what we need to be doing." Yeah. So that's what we've been other, saying all along, right? And the other yeah. thing too is, and this this is where I will throw uh, a bone to this. This floored me, Jim. How old are you again? Um, forty two. You had to think about that. I I did, man. (laughs) Guy, how are you? How old are you? 48. Okay. So we're okay. So I, all right. How old are you, Chris? 51. So we're not guy. And we're, we're not that far apart. Okay. 10 years with you, Jim. That's, that's fine. But, um, the thing that I thought was incredible guy with when I put those, on my stories, those surveys. Oh yeah. Yeah. The polls. Yeah. Yeah. And I was asking those questions. I was asking those questions for a strategic reason. Guy, when you posted them on yours, at least that one I saw, it was very interesting for me to see the wild difference of responses to some of those questions. And I can't help but think it has to do with probably the age demographic 
of your audience. Because I know that I have a wide variety of people that follow me from late teens, you know, early 20s. But there's a lot in my age class that probably have known me since the 90s and early 2000s. And so they're, they come up with me. But that younger generation of Hunter at 20s and early 30s, maybe mid 30s. Honestly, I. I'm disappointed that they don't have some of this fundamental information, but quite honestly, I look back on, okay, if I go back 20 years, so let's say they're, let's say they're 30 years old Mm -hmm. and we go back 20 years, they were 10 years old. They're not paying attention to other than what they're doing on the playground or grab ass and around, you know, in, in, in their teenage years and all that. Most of the people are not paying attention to politics, so to speak, until you're well in your late 20s. Which means if I look back on my 10 years, 15 years, 20 years from you know, from that I've been in, but the the fundamental shift happened in that time with the organizations that are driving the vast majority of sportsman dialogue, the guy to your, you know, the three and four letter, you know, nonprofit organizations. The sad reality is, is probably 90% of them are all progressive organizations that have a tendency to lean on the left. And they have a very strong tendency to purposefully manipulate information and messaging to get people to do exactly what they want them to do, which means I want you to, they, they want you to buy a membership. They want you to support their cause. They give you this big flowery, ooh, ah statement that sounds freaking righteous and holy and awesome. We're going to sing Kumbaya and chant around the pedestal, the, the, the totem of the North American model of wildlife conservation. Meanwhile, send us your money. And we'll go to Washington on your behalf. We'll talk to the Fish and Wildlife on your behalf. We'll talk to Forest Service on your behalf. We'll talk to BLM on your behalf. We'll talk to legislators on your behalf. And then you never pay attention to what they actually do when they go tripping off to Washington. Yeah, nobody. And so it makes sense why so many people, I think in Guy, yours, I think it was 75% of your, your listenership thought that sportsmen's dollars pay for Forest Service. I, I just sat there and I, I did this. I just held my face with my jaw agape and I was like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. We, we've got way more work than I thought we did. Like I was like, people were wondering why I was frustrated and angry and guy, you know, I, you, you and I did that one in September and I was not in a good place because I, there were so many of these things hitting me and I'm, you know, I'm, whether it's here in Kansas and in Colorado and everything else. And I was like, what I didn't, I, I didn't appreciate the actual level of knowledge gap on truth of what our community is and its history and, and the reality surrounding it. No, no one, no wonder where we are. It's no wonder we are where we are now, because in my opinion, there has been a just grotesque lack of honest leadership. Do you, do you still have that poll question, Chris, that the the one that you're talking about, uh, just so the audience knows what exactly you're talking about? I think that's oh. important. That was a, a really good poll. I think that's the one that uh, I thought I had copied and pasted and tried to put on my page. And for some reason, it didn't go. I did the other one. Right. Right. Um, yes, so I seven, asked. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, no. Uh, so I asked a couple of them. So one. Uh, let's see. The one regarding where where the 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 money yeah. from tag fees goes, like you know, does it pay with for regards service? to the North American model of wildlife conservation? Sportsmen's dollars pay for which of the following: a go. state wildlife and natural resource agencies, b fed land and wildlife agencies, both a and b, and d. Unfortunately, I don't know. Fed so, land guys meaning US Forest Service, BLM, those kind of those kind of lands. Yes. Right. So right. we had in order A was 16%, B was 5%, C, both A and B 
71%, hence the number Chris was talking about, and then 8% claim that they were uninformed. Which I I, I will shake their hand. Yes. Yeah. For saying yeah. I don't know. Here, here's an interesting thing. So when I when I started the podcast, I every I think for two years, at the end of every single episode, I had a conservation quick. And I would ask people, what is conservation? What does conservation mean to you? Right. And I did that, man. That was the hardest question anyone had to answer across hunting celebrity types to your average Joe. That was the hardest question in two years. Oh, you would ask the guest. You'd ask, yeah, because the the reason I started was to raise awareness, to look at the things more than the, you know, buying this, buying that and blah, 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 bullshit. Um, you know, what is, what is hunting? What is it's, you know, human hunting is human, whatever that fucking one thing is. Uh, (laughs) But that was the most, that was the most challenging question to call it 98% of the folks that I was interviewing. And it got to a point where I would literally, when I went in to clean up the episode for publish, I would have to edit 30 seconds down, 20 seconds. People would, I'd say, Hey, take your time. If it takes you two minutes to figure it out. That's fine. And we would sit there and I'd have these gaps in my wave files that I would have to reel back in. And I, I mean, I knew it then, but that's, awesome. that was, it was purposeful for me. And then it got to the point where people were like, I've heard it, man. I shit. I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say. So case in point, here we are. <laughs> you that, it, and it's in it. And when did you start your podcast? How many years ago? Four years? No, this is my fifth year. Yeah, so I'm in my so fifth year now. Here, here we are. Yeah, and, and on my audience, uh, that question fifty. I think it was fifty six percent of said that it was for both wildlife agencies and federal land agencies. Just, just so anybody that's listening and did not listen to my podcast, uh, no, that's incorrect. Sportsman's dollars goes to pay for those state wildlife agencies. The federal land agencies are paid for through uh congress um so aaron and I, that was part of that podcast that aaron and i did and that was why I, I pissed a whole bunch of people off when i talk about public you know western public land you know hunters being welfare, welfare baby. babies yeah welfare babies i love that one. <laughs> and I, did, and, and get I, did you get a bunch of dirty messages yeah. on that one I do, like i don't like aaron you know he aaron got a bunch like people don't uh. and i don't I'm not. I'm not complaining about that. Just, not- well, I. It might be Chris. It might be Chris. Like I would not want to debate you. I. I wouldn't want to debate you. Yeah, like you, I, I don't. The hamster I spins my- your will a lot faster than the hamster spins my will. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and yeah, so yeah, I. I. Yeah. That. That could be why, dude. I, but Hamsters. I've been doing it for the past thirty years, man. Like I've I know, been- and and that's what I wanted years. to bring up. That was interesting about that episode that you brought out today. Like I didn't know some of that stuff that you were talking about. Again, I haven't finished that episode, but I got about halfway through it where uh, Chris was talking about on that episode how the the process of these prairie dogs and how he was up against these activists in court or in these meetings and with the legislators going back and forth regarding relocating these prairie dogs for, you know, home development and, and commercial development and all this stuff to kind of, you know, the, the, their, their idea was no prairie dogs are to be killed by the, the hand of humans or, or however you describe that. It was yeah. just interesting because w- when you talk about that and, and the timing that that was going on, like, uh, you were doing that when I was in the Marines, which seems like a lifetime ago to me. And so you've been in the trenches with this a long time. And so I think that people need to understand, especially because I, I might, I'm, yeah, I, I am the, the youngest guy, uh, w- within this little trio here. Obviously, I'm the definitely uh, the ain't mo- the prettiest. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm the most handsome. Clearly, I'm the most handsome. <laughs> handsome fellow and young fella. That's, that's what you I know. What's, what's funny about that, Jim, <laughs> is that well, people will still try to argue chris or us down even with chris's background being boots on the ground i mean literally sitting across the table looking these folks eye to eye and say well you're all fucked up there buddy i mean it's like yeah. come on man come yeah, and, and, f- and, I, and I, I would encourage people to listen to that <laughs> uh, because it really puts that into perspective as you know this this uh, this is not something new and and it's not new to chris it's not new to guy 
Uh, and, and the stuff you, you guys have a long history, Chris. You have a really long history from you know a, a biology background. Not that old. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, weren't you there? Uh, you helped. You helped Abraham Lincoln kind of get those uh, the chickens penned up at the White House because you were the only a biologist in the Correct. union. Cor- correct. I'm pretty sure that's how that went down. Yes. And so, um, it's <laughs> just, it's just, it's good to know. It's, it's just good to have that history. And, and so I don't even know where I was going with that, dude. I kind of lost my train of thought, uh, but, uh, go listen to well, that episode. Well, the, the, the point being is, is, um, well, you just said it, this isn't new. Like, it's funny when I hear how long have I been talking about, you know, just even Jordan Peterson and, Take, I mean, I don't know when, I mean, I, I posted that understanding ideology YouTube video now. I think it's two years ago now. So I've been talking about understanding ideologies, understanding personalities, understanding how people think, value sets, um, really trying to relate to people and understand them better, like for years now. And, and people just, it just, it, they just glaze over and, and they don't want to, they, they just don't want to understand it. But, but yet here we are now you're in a position where oh shit i like i used to be able to be friends with and this is part of what i talked about you know i used to be friends with the agency and even though the agency you know didn't give me the tags that i wanted or they they cut you know, they made this unit limited draw or whatever and, and i'm grumpy with them we always in the back of our mind always thought that the agency was always going to be on the side of hunters yeah. At least yeah. with at least to some degree. I I've always had that assumption. Yep. Yeah, maybe maybe they're not going to maybe they're not going to give me everything that I want, but at least they're out there providing for hunting. At least they're out there managing for fishing or whatever. Maybe they're at least out there cuz the North American model of wildlife conservation, right? Blah, blah blah. And then all of a sudden you get a situation where it's like um no, one governor can just change the entire face of a wildlife commission and that wildlife commission could be absolutely hostile and literally absolutely undermine the agency and just tie the hands of the agency to where the agency has no choice but to be like oh okay we we have to do what you guys want to do and now all of a sudden we're faced with a reality where suddenly the natural resources department that we used to rely on as our ally is yeah. now yeah. actively hostile against us and yep. We don't have an, uh, we don't have an understanding of how to communicate. We don't have an understanding of how to evaluate someone's value set and, and understand their, their motivations, understand ideology, the progressive mindset. We're like, okay, I hear what you're saying now, but I know what's going to come down later. So let's, I mean, all of these things come into play. And I think maybe I mentioned it before. Um, but it's worth repeating here. When I graduated college, I wanted to become a, a game warden and I wanted to get my, I, I was ready to jump in the pipeline of the Colorado parks and wildlife. A lot of the people that are, that you guys see behind the, you know, uh, sit in, in the public meetings, sitting behind the, the, the podium, uh, the microphone of the public. There is a lot of those folks that are agency folks there. I, I went to school with these guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we graduated yeah, together you did or some of them somewhere. Some of them graduated before or after me. I was all set to go into in, in the pipeline of the agency. And when I graduated, I took the test, smoked it, like just aced it. And then there was three of us, three of us that got the highest written scores. And then when we got to the uh, in-person verbal, you know, like the, the in-person uh, verbal interview. interview. Kind of thing, yeah. Sorry. See you later, Mr. Rowe. <laughs> no, no, no. So the second phase. The three of us, we smoked that one. We we aced that freaking thing to where when we walked out of it, the people that I knew and and, and the folks that they're shaking our hands, they're like, "Awesome job, you guys freaking crushed it! Congratulations, can't wait to work with you guys. You guys are exactly what we need, boy! I can't wait for it." So you go to the third phase, and that one's in uh, with and it was Gary. I, if I remember right, it's Gary Berlin, and and if the guy's still alive, I'll 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 buy him a beer and I'll I'll apo- I'll shake his hand and apologize. Because I walked into that interview, thought it was it was in the bag, and I spent he went up one side of me and down the other for an hour, just ripped me a new asshole, and basically said, "Get out, I don't want you." And I, I, and no, the, the 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 us three that, that what he didn't hire any of us, 
And he he's famous on record saying, I would rather hire a speech communication major out of CU Boulder, which is left le- far left, left leaning than any any wildlife biology student from Colorado State University. And it just floored me because yeah. I was like, what the freaking hell? We You've got the best of the best and everybody wants. Nope. I want somebody. What did he say? I, I have somebody that will uh, play he, the game. Well, he wanted somebody to play the game. He wanted somebody that's going to ride the brand. Number one. Yeah. Ride you're, the brand. That's a good way to put it. You're part of, you're part of this agency. And so you need to, you need to be part of the agency. More yeah. importantly, I'm some young cocky kid that's coming out of college thinking he's got all the answers. And I don't know jack shit because it wasn't about the biology. It wasn't about the science. Who cares about that? We've mm-hmm. got that handle. He saw the landscape. He saw where it was going is we need people to be able to connect with people. And we need people that are going to be savvy that can communicate and they can message and they can take that science for the agency and ride the brand and then be convincing with it on the landscape. I didn't have those skills. I didn't have that skill set back in the day. And so it's, it's amazing where, again, we, we talked to in our, in our previous discussions where we get in our little silos. We, and especially with social media, that's the other thing about this is so many of us in the sportsman community are now have grown up with social media. And I mean grown up as in you had social media when you were in middle school, high school. And when you became a young adult and you graduated and moved out on your own, you recently get married or whatever. And you're just, you're, you're really getting going into, into hunting. Social media was a, a fundamental part of who you were right off the get go. So again, we talked about you get to, to cherry pick the community and the friends that you associate with and you just get yourself in these little echo chambers and these positive feedback loops to where you're not out there challenging yourself. It's not because you're avoiding it per se, but you're just, you're just living your life and having fun. And you're just choosing, you're, you're, you're surrounding yourself with those things that are in, they're awesome and cool and wonderful and that, that are feeding into the, the, the things that you like all the while further insulating you from other stuff that's out there. That's extremely important that you need to pay attention to and engage and, and, and wrestle with. And so it, as I know that I've been critical about it in the past, I, I guess the, the, the poll, the, to bring it back to the poll, I'm, I did it because I was just wanting to get some information for a discussion on a podcast. But when I started seeing the results come back, it really made me take a step. And especially guy, when it, when you posted and it was 71%, I'm like, Oh, shit. Well, and, like, and that, that what, what you're talking about there kind of leads into what I really want to talk about tonight, Chris is when, so we've got 71% of the people that responded that are under the impression that, uh, you know, you buy a deer tag and part of that money goes to help the, the public land that you hunt, U.S. Forest Service land, the BLM land. And it's just not the case. And there's a lot of things to wrap into this. And I, I did talk about this on, on last week's episode where, uh, you know, recently I went to, uh, an Idaho fishing game, uh, season setting meeting, right? And, and it was just a, a comment period kind of meeting. And, uh, again, I live in an area where, where this was being held. There's roughly 20,000 hunters that live. It's a big area, big part of Idaho. Uh, and there's roughly 20,000 hunters in this area. There were like eight people at this meeting, eight freaking people. And then you, you compound that with things like this poll that you're talking about where people just don't know exactly, you know, they're like, well, hunting is conservation. Well, how, you know, how is money or how is hunting conservation? Is it because it's not it's not preserving your public right uh, or public access on federal lands. Uh, it's not helping the Forest Service manage or make roads or make bathrooms or campgrounds uh, and none of that. And it, it, I, I think that my frustration is similar to yours. It's not that people don't know this stuff. It's more about people that don't know this stuff think that they do and they voice their opinions and they get really hostile with everybody else. And, and it doesn't matter if it's, if, if it's regarding hunting or uh, you guys, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm a big time civil war nerd. And so I'm, I'm in some of these civil war uh, Facebook groups 
and and these are historical groups we're we're talking about you know whether it's events or you know how many buttons does that frock coat confederate flak jacket have, or not flak jacket but coat have whether that's accurate or not and we really geek out and and I really like that stuff but uh you know it, it happens there as well where people will jump in and they will start going on these long diatribes about you know this cause of the civil war or that cause of the civil war or going back to hunting well, this is how it should be. Well, this is how it shouldn't be. But yet nobody shows up to the meetings and nobody even knows where the funding goes when you buy a tag. Nobody knows where the money comes from to operate a federal forest service lands or BLM land. Nobody knows this stuff, but yet everybody's out there screaming with these loud opinions. And and that, I think, is what is part of uh, it, it's a compounding po- or a compounding portion of this argument or not argument but um this problem that we face this discussion that we're having you know and to that point all, all three of us again i'm the youngest most handsome all three of us grew up hunting and loving hunting in an era where we didn't have words these words did not exist in our language social media text messaging smartphone digital this digital that e e scouting that stuff didn't exist in the vocabulary. Okay. It didn't, it didn't exist in our world yet. We were still very connected with each I other rem- as hunters. I, I remember I, as I'm holding up a mechanical pencil, I remember <laughs> when mechanical pencils came out, <laughs> right? <laughs> Dude, when I was in, I, I, I don't, I don't mean to go down. The, yeah. 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 I know. You, you know, <laughs> like, uh, I keep Chris was as, doing as you the guys motions. as you guys have been talking, right? And and we talking about the current state and the the thought has come come into the brain a couple times. And we're I say we, right? I'm I'm broad stroking the demographic at large. We are waiting for someone to come and save us. Because doing the fucking work oh. ourselves is too arduous and confusing and taxing and time consuming. Um, I had to get that in there. And then the fact that you have me on here and you're talking about a Confederate coat and how many buttons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't believe oh. how many people think it has this many buttons when really it was that many buttons. But, um, but no. yeah, I really, I really think it comes down to, you know, we're waiting for someone to, to run in with a fucking cape on and some, some, you know, red and white tidy whities and whatnot and some leotards and come and save the day. Um, and we don't have to do anything but set back and worry about, you know, as Chris in his ep- episode, FOC, what bow we're shooting and what tags we're going to put in for. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're waiting for someone to come save our asses, and it's not going to happen. And then there's this aspect of, and I've said it before, I think I've said it in one of our episodes, I used to think that, you know, me being a a, a side, and, and, and honestly admitting it, a sideline activist was to preserve our way of life for the future. And then a couple of years back, I'm like, Hey, I said it on podcast. Holy shit. Like I got to do this for our opportunity. And it's just escalated. Th- that has gone up so fast where I'm like, Oh, it's a panic. Now it's a panic. Like, what are we going to do? And people are still setting back thinking that, Oh, I'm fine. I'm going to, you know, we'll, we'll be okay. This is a slow moving train into the station and it's fucking not. It's a rocket ship. Can I ask you guys something? Oh, oh, sorry. You you were going to say something, Chris. Sorry. Nope. Go ahead. Um, this whole uh, when we're talking about ideologies, and we're we're talking about you've got your your progressive ideology, and that could be you know based in in uh, the left or the right. Uh, you've got you know restrained and unrestrained, and and through through this Constrained. ideology, Constrained. what's that? Constrained. 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 Okay. Uh, what did I say? Restrain. No, good. I mean, it's, that's a uh, solid Thomas Sowell reference, brother. It's constrained or, you know, constrained dude, mindset or unconstrained. That book, man. Thomas I Sowell. I told you. Man. I told you. Dude, that, my brain, I have to just stop and my brain has to catch its breath <laughs> after reading like a half a chapter of that thing. I am, I am still not finished. I have to put it down and process it, reread the, the, the chapter I just read process it again and then walk away for like two days 
like yeah. that 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 book is intense. Anyway, I don't mean to go off. You got to keep your dictionary keep nearby. Going, keep going. Oh, totally. I to, I, yeah. I I have to keep my phone. I look up what 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 does this mean? What does that mean? Yeah, crazy. And so, uh, but what I'm getting back to is when you start kind of digging into that kind of stuff, and and you start learning about different ideologies and and how how different people have different ideologies and and how that leads them to acting or behaving certain ways. We have come to this place in in America and and uh, throughout most of the developed world where. Um, and, and you guys, I don't want you to roll your eyes when I say it, but we've got this woke culture and cause I, I talk about this stuff a lot. We've got this woke culture and, and this, this kind of comes out of the, uh, ideological left, uh, where, where there is, and what, you know, what drives me crazy with it too, is I almost feel bad for them because they, they have to live in order to be in the circle. You have to think in this box and there is no thinking outside of the box. You know, these these uh, the, the, the leadership on the left determines what you can say, what you can't say, what you can do, what you how you can behave, all these things. And, and you have to live within those restrictions or you're not in the club because you'll get canceled. And, and what kind of way, first of all, to, to those leftists out there, what kind of way is that to live your life? What kind of way is that to live your life? Or you can you could be free like the rest of us. OK, that part aside. I, the the question I wanted to ask you guys is with this like the woke wokeness movement and these this woke culture and this gender ideology and this you know uh, race stuff and all these things that are that are kind of dominating the current uh, cultural aspects of America and the news and even even into like pop culture and TV shows and everything else. I've noticed in the last I don't know few months that there is a growing pushback to this and and it's it's getting more and more powerful and people getting are getting more and more aggressive with their level of being sick and tired of hearing about woke culture and and, and all the, the things that comes with it right do you first of all do you guys do you guys agree with that assessment or disagree with with uh, the growing amount of of pushback against the woke culture i, I partially partially Okay. Right. I, I think I'm going to pull some shit out of Chris's book as best I can because he's led me down this path of thought. Mm-hmm. So the progressive left. <laughs> Did you say path? Only- hold on. Hold on. Did you say path path of thought or path of fuck? Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> path of fuck. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> I, just, I didn't know what you, I was like. Wait, I don't know what I heard here. <laughs> the progressive left is. They're geniuses with nomenclature. So when we hear all these terms, woke culture, blah, 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 we ignore it for so long. Now we're tired of it, and this shit has a grip across our country. Sorry, I'm eating Swedish fish because I didn't eat dinner, and I woke up before this. So um, This shit has a grip across our country that we don't even know what to do. And then most people will ignore that nomenclature just because... It's stupid bullshit that we don't want to bother with. Okay. What I about you, Chris? I do hear people saying, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go oh, ahead. sorry. No, I, no, I, I, I do hear people saying, you know, screw this, screw this, screw this. But is it too little, too late? In some, I don't think I, so. I, I think in a lot of respects it is, man. I, mm, ooh, I kind of, I kind of lean, I hear where you're coming from, Jim, and I understand mm-hmm. it. I kind of lean more toward Guy, but. The, 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 there are more and more. Okay. So the problem is, is the farther it's, it's, you'll hear people talk about the concept of the Overton window that, mm-hmm. that boxes around what is generally acceptable. You know, you've, you've got left and right bounds where, you know, your activity in, in, in the, the society is kind of bound between two limits you you can't do things too egregious one way you can't do things too egregious another way and the progressives in the woke culture whatever they're always going to kind of just kind of just keep pushing it pushing it pushing it pushing it left the left side of the spectrum does a phenomenal job of just incrementally moving the overton window that that the the limits of what is acceptable and what's not acceptable progressively to the left the thing is, is individual ideologies are across that entire spectrum. And so I think what you're seeing, Jim, is 
the farther that window keeps getting pushed to the left, you have a bu- a larger body of people where that window has left them. So yeah, now yeah. you have more people that are like, this is getting freaking stupid. And and the people that it left them a long time ago, now where that it's way the freaking hell out in left field. You know what I mean? Like you guys are batshit crazy. Like yeah, all this, yeah. like the Furbies and, and some of the, you know, other stuff that's out there. You're like, okay, you've got a mental disorder. And at this point, we're just acquiescing to your mental disorder. And we've got, we've got to create public policy for your mental disorder. Okay. So yeah, I think part of the reason why you're seeing more and more pushback is because they keep pushing it farther and farther into the egregious, Mm -hmm. which then translates into more and more of society starts to have to feel the effect of it. It's one thing where, and this is the thing with the sportsman stuff. It's one thing if Washington, I'll, I'll own it. I don't give a shit about what's going on with Washington spring bear hunting. I'll never go spring bear hunt in Washington. Like I, I don't have a value for spring bear hunting period. And I don't ever plan on going back. Like maybe someday I'll plan, I'll end up back in Washington, Washington state, but I don't have, so like that, that whole turmoil up there, not, not my, not my circus, not, not my your cookie. Yeah. You know, exactly. So it's like, I, I'm, I'm going to check out of it, but because it doesn't affect me, but all of a sudden that same ideology and that same momentum shows up in my backyard. And now all of a sudden they're whatever that, you know, for Coloradans, you know, all of a sudden now the, 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 the most string, you know, hardened wolf advocates are now controlling the wildlife can, you know, commission. Oh shit. This is real. Yeah, it is real. And all of a sudden, wait a minute. Oh, it's affecting me. Yeah, it is affecting you. Mm-hmm. But oh, guess what? They've already picked up momentum and you're just waking up. Hey, Chris. I don't mean to cut you off. Now, it would it would appear to me that they are going to push that window as far as they can to figure out when it becomes egregious, and then it just slide back a little bit, and that's where we're at, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's yep. Exactly. No, that's perfect. Yeah, they'll push it. They'll push until people scream, and then they just pull it back a little bit, just enough. And but now, if they and don't just, just take it to the max right now, then and, it ain't no good. Jordan Possibly, Peterson yeah. has Jordan Peterson has a phenomenal lecture on this entire this entire discussion here. He 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 nails it, and that's exactly it. Yeah, what is that? What is that? Is that is that like so on his podcast somewhere? Or? It's, oh my gosh, yeah, it's one of his podcasts that one of his you know podcasts? way back. So, if I can ever find it again, I'll, I'll send it to you. But no, he talks about exactly, it. and it's it's that mindset, that ideology. You can go through the you know he just talked about the dark triad. You know whether you have. Uh, Machiavellian tendencies, uh, narcissism, uh, psychopath, psych- psychopathy. And quite honestly, now people are, are starting to add in. It's a fourth that, that sadism and, and social media is really bringing that out in people. But mm-hmm. when you, when you're dealing with that, those Machiavellian type people, those, those people that are the progressive ideology where it's manipulative. Absolutely. I'll manipulate you. I'll push you, push you, push you until you, until you scream. And then I'll just back it off. I'll, I'll just, I'll pull the pain off to where you, you, you settle in. Okay. All right. Fine. Just leave me alone for a little. Okay. We'll just leave you alone for a little bit. And then you get, you get comfortable in that new reality. And then as you're getting comfortable, we'll just start to push again and, and, and you'll move and you'll move and you'll move. And then at some point you're like, okay, that's enough. Okay. Nope. I'll stop pushing. Yep. You, I mean, so, it's, it's pretty a lot of this sounds like oh, what sorry. the animal activists are doing. I mean, that, that's exactly 100%. what this sounds like. And 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 so and that's kind of where I was going with this is the the reason I'm asking that is because I I would I would agree with what you guys said, but I I do stand behind the fact that I do believe that there is a bigger and growing pushback towards this stuff. What I mean by that is there has always been this silent majority that just kind of keeps their mouth shut and they just watch things happen and hope the pendulum doesn't swing too far. To the left. And but but what's happening, like you said, it's not like anybody's ideology is changing all that much with the exception of the extreme left. And they keep going further left, further left, further left. And they're leaving their, you know, what formerly were their normal Democrats in the dust. And and uh, and so what what I'm saying is the silent majority is now starting to speak up. And one of the one of the big things I disagree. Are, I disagree. Look at oh. look at the voting turnout 
for oh, the, just the, a I'm not, yeah, the, but your, well, your but voting no, turnout is a, a different thing. I, no, but voting it goes turnout to the point. A, okay, so if you if you are going to express discord about something, but you take no action, you're as guilty as the motherfuckers on the other side. Oh, I so agree with that. If, yeah, if totally. we're gonna say if we're gonna say people are waking up and they're ready, then why the fuck if we're gonna just put this in political party for voting purposes? Did only thirty percent, thirty seven percent of Republicans show up? Say something, Chris. Bring your put that to back up. Say, oh, say, he said he'll be right I, back. Oh, <laughs> oh, gotcha. Okay. No, I, so, I totally, I, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying there, man. It's, it's not, but, but the voting table. Or, or the the voting public is totally different than what I'm talking about. The pushback, uh, the 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 silent majority starting to speak up. We still have a tendency to be more, um, you know, with our ideology on on one side of this scale is more of the rural America. There, there's fewer of us. Uh, voting is always going to be an issue, um, but I do think that oh. that is changing, and I think that it is slowly changing. In a sense that people are getting sick and tired of getting pushed further to the left. And where I'm really seeing that is, is all this talk of this gender ideology. You know, people are getting sick and tired. You know, three years ago, nobody would say anything. Nobody said shit about gender ideology. Oh, we got to be all accepting and, and blah, blah, blah. Now people are saying, you know what? This whole child mutilation is fucking up our kids. And what, what is this generation going to look like in 20, 30 years? So five years, 10 years, five years, 10 years, you know, what, what does society look like if, if we allow uh, 10 year olds to make up their mind about what they're going to cut off their body and people, this is what people are starting to, even Democrats are starting to fight back against that. And, and, and and I've got hope with that. And I'm seeing a lot of hope with that because of, I, you know, it's something I pay a lot of attention to. I'm becoming more and more cynical. So I appreciate your hope and hopefully it rubs off on me, but going back to, Going back to the Overton window deal, since Chris brought that in, it, you're saying if we're, you know, we're slowly but surely mo- uh, waking up. But if if they're pushing that window as fast and as hard as they can, slowly isn't good enough. When when are we going to learn that we cannot just sit idle and wait or and, and now it's too late? This is what I was saying before. Now it's too late. Now I want to do something. And well, then I want to rewind even generally I speaking, rewind even further. Yeah, I want to rewind even further so people understand because Chris will bring shit up and we just talked about reading books with definitions. So the Overton window is is a range of policy policies politically acceptable to maintain population at a given time, or it's the spectrum of ideas on public policy and social issues considered acceptable by the general public at a given time. So push, 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 push to see where the general public is at. And then this is where we land. Oh, we got to move it back a little bit. That's a fast push. Now, if if everybody's waiting and saying, okay, now I'm going to start stretching so I can climb my ass out of this bed here. Well, by the time we do that, there's no pushback. So when that, you know, when that window of opportunity, it's come and gone. And it's kind of where we're at yeah. with some of the sportsman issues. Y- yep, you're exactly right. And and you know just the, to to kind of add to your point there that historically speaking, when when like a societal or when a society has fallen, when it, when a society has fallen, that that it, it is a situation as to where it's the cultural side of it that went too far, usually to the left, and and that that's you know that's just what history shows, and so. I guess uh, I, I was trying to tie this into the discussion that we're having. You know, I, I, I do feel strongly that there is, there has been a, um, almost a revival as to what people are willing to accept and not accept and what, what they're willing to keep their mouth shut. We need this revival in the sportsman's community because we can't have, we can't, we can't keep moving into the future with, minimal turnout to comment periods because activists are, are, are showing up to those. We can't, we can't continue with minimal, uh, I guess, commitment, time commitment, financial commitment, anything that, that sportsmen, uh, if they want a future in this are, are going to have to step up. And that's, that's what I'm saying. I guess what I was asking you guys is it, is it your opinion that, um, this, it is something that is possible to change is, is it, is a, is this, is it possible to, stop this pendulum from going too far one way and get everybody together or are people too caught up in their own self-interest to to jump on board and come up with some solutions 
That was a long question. That was a long ass question. In fact, I'll say it. <laughs> Go ahead, guy. Go ahead. And, unless this, unless you're still thinking, because no, mean, I'm not thinking. I, I'm I'm trying to. <laughs> I I don't think it is necessarily too late. Now we've been. I go pee. <laughs> We're writing notes go now. <laughs> um, I don't think that it's too, that we're too late. I think we're still on our heels, right? We've been reactionary to all these things for so, so very long. But what I will say is, and this is the part that I was kind of struggling to get through is, where, where are the big names and where, you know, the thought leaders, uh, the, the, the influence, you know, all those guys, where are the, where is their message to get their people rallied up and, and brought into this so we can make a change? How come, you know, the folks ain't saying, Hey, this shit is more important than this product, this product, this product, this product. And let's get our shit together and behind this and let's make this change. We, we need the voice. I, I don't think it's too late, but I think. I think we're fucking apathetic. I think we're apathetic. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I think we need, I need, we need those, those influential people, um, to fucking shit or get off the pot at this point. Mm-hmm. I, I will, I will only slightly disagree with you in so far as I don't think those type of people are going to be the leaders of the movement. Now, I, again, I, I welcome anybody I to prove me wrong. I don't think they're going to be the leaders no. of the movement. I think they are going to be the cheerleaders of the movement and the, and the, the, um, the, I think they're going to be the support structure. The issue that I have in, in Jim, you were talking about the fall of civilizations. I mean, you, you look at it. It's the fundamental difference between hunters and animal, ad, animal activists. Guy, you, you mentioned when you were doing your, your conservation quick there, you know, it was so difficult for people to come up with an answer because they just, they just didn't know. Why didn't they know? Because honestly, they never had to think about it. Okay. Keep asking the question, why? They didn't have to think about it. Why? Because it was just something they felt. Okay, so keep going on that thought. Hunting, by its very nature, is very individualistic. It's individualistic is or selfish. It's now, a selfish that can, endeavor. It's a selfish endeavor. It can be indiv- I hunt for my own personal reasons. Now, if I'm out there hunting, like say I had a family and back in the day, and I was I was hunting to provide for my family. I may not be out there hunting because I want to go kill that big buck and I want to go on to some, you know, ooh, ah, adventure. No, I need to go hunt because I need to put, mo- you know, meat in the freezer for my family. But it's still, it's a selfish endeavor because it's a selfish endeavor. It, and I don't mean that in a, in a pejorative. I don't mean that in a bad way. It can be, it can manifest itself in a bad way on the landscape. But I mean that from it's in, it's a, it's, it's personal. It fills something. And this is the thing that Aaron and I were talking about the, you know, why people hunt. You look at the surveys and it floored us. You know, people are like, number one reason why they go hunt to spend time out in nature. It's like, what? You know, and, and number two, uh, to spend time with family and friends. It's like, what the hell are you talking about? You can do that eight, 365 days a year. You don't have to hunt to do that, but it, everybody has a different value set for why they individually hunt and it speaks to them and that is what individually motivates them our hunting community is so freaking diverse that there's so many different value sets within the sportsman community that and and so many different uh, outlets for people to express their value sets, meaning many people value whitetail deer hunting. Many people value elk hunting. But there are less people that value mule deer hunting 
than there are that value whitetail hunting. There are less people that value coos deer hunting than value mule deer hunting. And there's less people that value mountain lion hunting than there are people that value elk hunting or deer hunting or sheep hunting. There are, so all these different things that we can hunt and things that we can pursue and things that we can do. Each one speaks to people individually. Like I said, I don't particularly have a value for spring bear hunting. Um, and I don't really have, I, I probably will never, I, I, I do not see myself ever killing a mountain lion under dogs. I, I never. Now I love running my lab. I love going pheasant hunting with my lab. And I grew up coon hunting with my uncle. So with, with walkers and black and tans and everything else. So I, I have no problem of people with people running dogs. And I have no problem with people hunting with dogs. I hunt dogs. I, I hunt pheasants and quail with my dog. I just don't have a value for mountain lion hunting. So because of my individual value set, and just how diverse and fragmented the hunting community is as far as its opportunities from elk, deer, caribou, moose, sheep. But I mean, we are intrinsically, I believe, from a foundational standpoint, the, the foundation of everything that we built everything on is fragmented. It's not a unified type of deal. Now we could, we could go back all the way. In my opinion, we could probably go back all the way down to maybe we're unified under a value that we value consumptive use period. Right. Like That's we, 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 we value consumptive use. Okay. Boom. We, we got behind that, but just like the poll, you know, when we, when we asked, when I, I, I think you did too, but I, when I asked, you know, who should pay, for wildlife conservation. Should it be just hunters? Should it be 50-50? Should it be 30? And then D was enough is enough. Hunters have, have paid enough. It's time for someone else to do it. There was a, there was a segment of the popula- of hunting population that said, you know what? Screw it. I don't want to put, we don't, we shouldn't have to bear it anymore. Someone else should do it for us. So we can't even agree on the North American model of wildlife conservation of consumptive use uh, in the user pay model. Because there are some people that don't value the user pay. So at the very least, I think the only underlying cohesive foundational block that we have, bedrock that we have, is we all value a consumptive use lifestyle. But there's some people that value trapping that don't. I mean, so the challenge is, Jim, to your point, Mm -hmm. we are starting out so freaking fragmented with our own individual values that it is wildly difficult for us to coalesce under any sort of organization group or even unifying idea I and agree. so when you look at animal activists however it's a contrast it, is, it, has, it has nothing to do with them it is literally an outward expression, a value, their personal value is for the well-being and perpetuation of something else that their their efforts can all save. It's an external value set expression to where it may it's absolutely unifying because I value that. that I, I value the idea of no, prairie, whether it's prairie dogs or wolves. I value that no animal should die by the hand of man. And I'm, my value is to ex- express that on the landscape. Every other person that has that same value set, it's all directed to the same in the same thing. It's so it's a unifying mindset and it's a unifying activity. So it makes sense. It's it's, 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 it's I I really like 
it's I like the way you I've, I've I've never thought that deeply on the way you just described that. And it, it, it kind of just, you know, light bulbs go off. It's a cause There's, outside of and beyond what they are. Right. So hunting for us, filling our it, freezer, having the experience, blah, blah, all the reasons that we want to we want to, uh, you know, justify it by. Where where they have a, an external cause to fight for, and and I've I say this all the time, that is where we are at in this society. We we've gotten to this level of com- comfort as humans in developed worlds where we we find ourselves seeking a cause to fight for, and and these causes to fight for drive our values and drive our our motivations. And and so yeah, I I really like the way you put that, man. What did I say in my podcast today? You said a lot, man. It's like three hours long, so you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to pinpoint fair, that one. Fair point. Fair point. Fair point. I, I'll, I'll, I'll eat that one. At the at on those press releases. Let me. I've got, I mean, like, Chris Rowe is grabbing press releases. Here we oh, go. I'm just running commentary while you were gone. Here's here's I've got them all printed out. Here's the press release from Center for Biological Diversity, right at the bottom. Center for Biological Diversity is a national, nonprofit conservation organization with more than 1.7 million members and online activists dedicated to the protection of endangered species in wild places. Can you guys tell me what organization we have as sportsmen that has 1.7 million sportsmen None. as members? I don't think any of them do. I I, I don't know. I <laughs> What's, what's the turkey? Seven million NRA would be the. I think NRA would be the the closest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I I, I mean, I I would say the 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 turkey wildlife turkey federation maybe not even close. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I, guy, I tell you what. While while I'm while we're finished your thought, guy, can you go? Can you look that? Do you have the ability to look it up? I'm already on it, brother. Yeah, I awesome. I don't I don't awesome. think we have anything close I, to I don't, that. I don't know, but may, maybe we do. Maybe we do. But I I'll be shocked if we do. But more important, okay, so you got 1.7 million. Okay, so right off the bat, we're fragmented. They're unified, all right? Mm-hmm. And they have a cause. You you nailed it. They have a cause. The problem that I see, and you say, do we have hope? I, I think we do. I think we can. But what I outlined my thoughts today was, I, I think the, the, the era of amateur or slash hobby advocacy. Yep. Is done. I we, agree. we we can't we can't do this 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 this. I'm not even going to say it. I, I, okay, I'm going to say half assed, but I'm and I and I know. I'm not saying half assed as a as a derogatory. I'm talking about is we're not half assed, half hearted. Like, no, nah, it, that's a, that doesn't fill it. it Armchair. You know, it, it, it's <laughs> you're. What you're trying to express is is I, the the way you explain it with the hobby activism, I think, describes it the best, where, uh, again, for hunting to us, isn't an, it's not an external cause. So yeah. we chime in and we have opinions in between our day jobs and our kids and our families and our, you know, minivan payments and, and, and whatever. Uh, you guys don't have a minivan, and, do you? And no. Okay, 3D shoots and, and hunting and everything. 3D like, yeah. shoots, hunting seasons, all that kind of stuff. And oh, oh by the way, thought. oh, by the way, hell with the Center for Biological Diversity. Right. Uh, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, but here's here. I'm going to post a picture of me blowing away an elk on the mountain. Okay. We, we, can, right? we, we can go there as well. But <laughs> by, by what, I, what I'm looking at is, is I think where you have these, well, bottom line, the only way that I think sportsmen are going to survive is we start doing what the activists do. And I don't mean, I, I don't mean playing. Well, no, I, no, I'm sorry. I, I won't even, I won't even go there because the activists play within the rules. They just know the rules better than we do. And they win and they beat us at the game. That's, but um, I, I agree with what you said there, though. We need to start playing the same game that the activists are playing. We, we need to hire attorneys. We need we, to we, hire there's, attorneys. There, yep. There's no, there's no reason why at this point in the, in the, in the stage, like we lost Colorado lost bear, spring bear hunting and bear hunting over bait and bear hunting with hounds in the nineties because of a ballot initiative. 
How in the hell does Colorado, and every few years, Colorado has been threatened. Sportsman of Colorado has been threatened with the, the, the idea of a ballot initiative for banning mountain lions or bobcat hunting or banning this or banning. How the hell do the sportsmen of Colorado not have a unified organization that has a powerful attorney on retainer that is ready to go to just crush every fucking thing that comes out the gate? It it's so, beyond me at this point. But do you? I'm sorry. You, oh, I agree. I agree. But, and what? Same, oh, thing ahead, ahead. same thing with Washington. Same thing with Washington State. You know the politics of your fucking. St- I'm sorry, your freaking state. Like, what are you doing? Like, how do you not have some freaking heavy hitting attorneys on fucking retainer to help navigate you through? The little tiny threads that you could pull on in the administrative law, the tiny little loopholes that you can exploit, just like the activists do. How is California, like some of these progressive states or left leaning states that have been chronically plagued by these activities and these onslaughts from the animal? How the fuck, excuse my language, how the fuck are you not more organized? I don't understand it. I, I mean, I'm. I'm I don't, I don't either. I, I don't either. And what, Chris, do you but think that goes that, to the fragmentation? That goes right back to the fragmentation. Yeah. But at some point, but again, guy, what would I say? We we value and maybe it's it's maybe it's it's one of those things where you're standing on the railroad track and you're looking a hundred miles down this the, and all you see is this tiny little pin light in the in the in the distance, and someone's saying, Hey, there's a train coming, and you're like, oh, I don't see a train. And then uh, uh, years go by and it, the, the pin light's a little bit bigger. And you, you know, somebody's like, dude, there's a freaking train re- coming. You might want to get off the tracks. And you're like, oh, I think that's a train. Oh, I think that thing's way the hell out. I don't have to worry about it. At some point, the train is right in front of your nose and it's going 200 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. So at some point, you've got to yep. see that these things are coming. So guide to, to what we were talking just a minute ago about the foundation. We are so fragmented that it's going to be difficult for sportsmen to rally around one another unless it is at the base fundamental core level of we value a consumptive lifestyle. And you better fucking fight on that. Like rally around that. Like I want to save hunting and I want to save my ability to hunt as much as I want to. Like those are, see, this is the thing, just like the, the, like the uh, ballot. Uh, or the uh, the thirty three two one zero five point eight. Once the wolves are established, they're going to do this. It's not about. It's like it's like two parts. It's like we're going to establish wolves, and then they're going to do this. It's I value the consumptive lifestyle, and I want to be able to hunt as much as I want to, as wherever I want to, with as many species as I want to. Yeah, we're gonna we're. We, we've got to rally at least around that because, you know, I made this point as well to a couple people these past couple weeks or where, or, or this past week. There will, there's, you know, do I, do I envision that Colorado is just going to ban all hunting? No, no. 10 years from now, Colorado will have hunting. But if Colorado has 10% of the hunting that it has today, the activists, are going to sit there and the general public is going to be like looking at you like um you you still have hunting like what are you talking about you guys yeah. you guys can go hell hunt you guys, yeah, what, you guys we're not taking anything hunt. away from you you just lost 90 yeah. percent of all your hunting opportunities but you still have hunting okay so like at some point even though we hunting is individual and that is i believe self-defeating us i think if we could ever wrap our head around we're losing the the fundamental opportunity for our culture to maintain consumptive use lifestyle oops uh, the the biggest thing is i don't think people unify around that until it's literally almost all gone you said something in your podcast today and i was like holy shit the, and the <clears throat> This will sound horrible. I have a lot of respect for the 
the anti movement and the you know the HSUS oh, yeah. folks and everything, right? Oh, yeah. However, I, people want to take that. But I disagree you, with them, but they are yes. fucking good. They're I awesome. hate them. So, so you were talking about your history with the Prairie Dogs and HSUS and how how they came in and bought two of the local orgs. Yeah, one or put, two. I, I I thought it was two, but maybe it was only one. But regardless, they bought. Regardless, up. they yeah. bought them up, put them under the umbrella. Yes. And then sat there with national money to fight. Yep. Oh. Yep. Sportsman. Sportsman. Uh, three yep. letters. Uh, yep. Houston. Uh, who's we bought? Have a, yeah. We have a problem. So, so yeah. here I'm a, I, I got some of the oh, numbers um, that I'll just throw out right now. Um, so NRA. Okay. And, and we're going to say, what do you, I don't know the percentage of sportsmen at NRA, but 4.9 million. So right there. Uh, okay, but sweet. not all right, cool. Not right. necessarily a sportsman's org. Exactly. Per se. Yeah. Okay, say. stop, stop, stop a moment. Pittman Robertson Act is firearm sales. I'm sorry, ladies and gents, but the firearm industry these past couple of years has what has put Pittman Robertson dollars over the one billion mark. Yep. And we can have that conversation later on. And, and what 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 Chris is talking about is is the, uh, the these aren't necessarily sportsmen these are people that go out and shoot clay targets or just uh right. you know blink with uh, 22s yeah bl- yeah yeah just a short or uh, shooting enthusiasts right they're, they're not two a movement hunters. folks the two a yep. movement yep okay so let me keep going on these numbers your- yeah keep keep going with that okay rocky mountain elk foundation take a stab at it chris uh i'll bet you there it's several hundred thousand members uh i'll say 380,000 Jim, uh, half a million, thirty-two thousand. Oh fuck me! Are you 32, serious? Thirty-two thousand mem- members for the I just, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. I just pulled it up. I'll I'll check again because I was so. Sore too. No, 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 no. Let's say that everybody paid just that thirty-five dollar uh, membership is only one million one hundred and twenty thousand or one one million one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in revenue from just those basic membership fees Do membership hey, fees. Yep. national yep. uh wild turkey federation two hundred and fifty thousand uh, okay right. our favorite our favorite t shirt organization uh at forty thousand what 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 is the favorite t shirt organization b h a buddy oh b h a hey i i I'm having brews. Bruce with right now. So yeah, hey. you are. Even a blue moon. Holy. So they're hell. so they're on BHA, right? They have forty thousand members, and then online supporters at three hundred eighty-five thousand. Hold up. Hold, so, hold the freaking. Hold the. Sorry. BHA sorry. Sorry. Is higher just, than Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Bingo. That just blew my mind. That, that blows my are mind. You kidding me? That oh, blows my okay. mind. Wait, wait, wait. The, then the next claim on theirs it says online supporters three hundred eighty-five thousand. So total supporters oh, totaling that. over. No, 400. no, no, I know, no. I'm not, I want I'm active not, members. Hey, active I, I had members. to pull it. I had to pull it. That, that's, that's somebody who clicked. That that was this, somebody who clicked through. I don't give a shit. This, who's who's? I, I if I didn't bring that to this table, shame on me. <laughs> right. You, fair point. I, what, what, else, what else? What else you got, guy? You got? Is, are there more? S and then SCI at fifty thousand. I was SCI looking for Mule Deer SCI Foundation. SCI only has like SCI like Dallas, or are you talking SCI? Just SCI as Safari Club International, um, fifty thousand members. What does Sportsman Alliance have? Oh, it's going to be even less. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I know for a fact. I, I, I'm going to say Sportsman's so, Alliance is going to be under twenty thousand. So those those four that you just I, mentioned, I bet that's, you it's that's, under that's, 10. that's three hundred and seventy two thousand people amongst a demographic of ten million people. Hold on, all that you, you, you're you're going to be double counting people. There are people that are Elk Foundation. True. Yes. Yes. Oh, very true. Because I am. I am too. Um, let's see. The only yeah. I mean, the only one I I'm not a member of is sure BHA. there was going to be a hell of a lot more. I man, I guess I, I thought I Rocky Mountain. Oh, I yeah. I actually thought half a million. I was. Gonna I, be I actually understand it though because because some They're of the you know legacy orgs. Yeah. Right, they've had a hard time over the last few years, the last decade, because it's a lot of old school thinking, and then yep. people weren't necessarily behind the the missions or understood them. And then you have a hierarchy that doesn't want to make the change and and right. ensure the digital world, right? And we've I've seen right. that with Rocky Mountain, um, right? Oh no, no, I, I trust me, I, we don't have to get into the orgs right now. But what? Okay, so what does TRCP have? Hold on, I'm I'm still looking for Sportsman's Alliance. Your foundation, a little bit. 
I'm looking to, I've got, I'm curious. I've got, uh, where are you finding that? Like membership. There's so much editing you're going to have to do. How many? I know, right? <laughs> He's not well, gonna we'll just He's keep, just keep, I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't care. I don't care. This is real stuff, you know? Well, keep um, looking. Keep looking. Cause I, at yeah, this point, I, I'm super curious. Like my, the, the one group that I really like is Mule Deer Foundation. And I can't find their numbers. So if you I find can't find their one, numbers right, either. Sorry. Um, Oh, come on with the pop-ups. Nobody, that's, that's not even a, that's, uh, they, they do these pop-ups. That mule deer is from like the freaking dump right outside of Salt Lake City. I've seen that Correct. mule deer before. <laughs> All right. Let's see who we are, how we can serve. Um, I don't know. I can't find numbers for mule deer foundation. Uh, if, if you guys can, um, I couldn't find them now. And, and I'm just, you know. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm I, I can, I can actually send an email and find that out like tomorrow, but it won't help us on this show. But no. I, I, I'm just going back to, uh, I, I am blown away that the BHA has more membership than uh, RMEF, but it uh, also though, at the but, same time it makes sense. Why? Because BHA, it, it makes they, absolute sense. They're really right? they're, good they're, at marketing. They're, they're really right. good at. Well, well they're using, down. they're using the, uh, the electronic leash, right? I mean, that's yeah, the yeah, campaign. Yeah. They, they do a better um, job. They're more tuned into the digital yeah. era uh, yeah. versus Rocky Mount, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. They're, they, they can. They can come across as a bit antiquated to to the younger generation sometimes. I think, and and yeah. that that maybe that perception probably needs to change, um, you know. And so because it's interesting, I'm I don't know, I that just surprises me, and it, it surprises me when when you do the math on that. That's roughly on those four organizations, three hundred and seventy two thousand hunters, um, and and you you know contrast contrast that with the one point seven million. Uh, active paid members of, uh, the Center for Biological Diversity, uh, which, which, uh, and, and, you know, there's going to be some, some double whatnot with this as well. But I'll bet you the Humane Society of the United States is, is quite a bit larger than oh, yeah. the Center for Biological Diversity. So, yeah. Yeah. So you guys, you guys are still, I'm just trying to keep the conversation going while you guys are Googling. So I don't have to sit here and edit all this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm I so limited trying- on time right now. <laughs> well, anyway, I mean, we can, we can, we, we've made the point. I mean, the, the, the issue is, is we're going to have to have massive unifying. And, and I, and, and I don't need, I, I don't, maybe, it, maybe it is a national organization that, that comes in and swoops that, in. That's what I was going to ask you, Chris, is when you're talking about like a, a lobbyist slash, you know, attorney driven kind of movement for sportsmen. Um, is would would something on a localized level? You being a guy that's been in these kind of trenches, would would groups on local levels be more effective than like a national outfit? Uh, and, and this is my ignorance, just spewing forth right now. In my opinion, I think it would be good. You well, you could have an overarching national organization, but they're going to have to have. They're going to have to have local. A yes. But like, for instance, if you're going to argue in state court or something like that, then you're going to have to be bar licensed in that state, you know. So you're going to have to have local attorneys, somebody in there that, that can argue in that state. I believe now on the on the federal level, you don't have to. So I don't know what would be best. I, I really don't know what would be best. But like at this point, anything is better than nothing. Like I, I talked about in my podcast, and the fact that. You know, the activists are now going to sue the forest or threatening to sue the forest service over allowing hunting on the medicine bow route national forest because of wolves being killed in, in Wyoming trying to set up a sit. I don't think they have a case. I might be yeah. ignorant as shit, but yeah. I mean, they very well may. I think they're just doing it to harass and they're setting up the, the, the precedent to, to just continue to harass the forest service into acquiescence. But regardless, you know, they're, they're, they're pulling on a loophole or they're pulling on a, a statement of federal law. This little thread of federal law saying the federal agencies are mandated or are, are forced to under the Endangered Species Act that they have to follow the law. They have to protect endangered species. Well, they're going after the Forest Service because some of the wolves that were in Colorado, which are not exempted out of the, uh, current Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, group went to Wyoming and were killed and the activists are arguing okay then we need to shut down hunting 
in this area of Wyoming, because if Colorado wolves can disperse over into Wyoming and come back and they can get shot over in Wyoming, well, then those wolves are not actually protected, are they? So we need now to have cross boundary protection between Colorado and Wyoming in order to protect Colorado wolves. And I guarantee the same damn thing is going to happen with Utah to where it's going to be wolves go from Colorado to Utah and Utah is going to be unable to do the, they're going to try to sue the Utah that you're not allowed to do anything because well, the wolves are protected there. Like they, they will pull yeah. on every little thread. Sportsmen ha- have to have some attorneys that are on their side to where they're like, hold hold the freaking phone. No, we need to pull on this thread and we need to pull on that thread. And we're going to pull here and we're going to, we're going to check you back here. We're going to put, shut you down here at the very least. How about file an amicus brief and, and in support of, you know, the Forest Service are fighting against some of these things and, and and lending some money in this fight so that way we can have some wins. We 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 can't just keep doing it through volunteers that are doing it because it was it sounds like a really cool club that mm-hmm. I want to be involved with and it, it gives me purpose in my life to be a to be a member of XYZ sportsman's organization in the state. We 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 can't do that anymore. Yeah, it's not unless we just want to sit and watch the Titanic sink, and while we just munch on our shrimp cocktail. But that's fine. But if you want to move the needle, we're going to have to get unified and serious. What do you What do you guys think? Right? I mean, we're talking about the orgs and and this where we need collaboration, if you will. You know, we look at Mule Deer Foundation. I'm not knocking any of them, right? In their missions. Um. And the, and the need for us to legal legal up, if you will, and spend some money there. Um, well, if we look at, you know, I don't know what how many acres of restoration or whatever Mule Deer did or Rocky Mountain or National Wild Turkey Federation did in the last, call it two years, five years, 100,000, 150,000, 250,000 acres. Um, why not pull some of that in, right? Because if we improve mule deer habitat, then the unintended consequence is turkey habitat improves, elk habitat improves, right? So why not understand that as a conglomerate, come under the same umbrella, and then take some of that funding or take a couple of those projects per year out of each pot and put that to the legal fund for sportsmen in general? That's where we need to be, not, not you know, championing. Well- I did X amount of acres. I did X amount of habitat restoration. I did X amount of transplants. Go ahead, Chris. Chris. Five words. Five words. 501C3. Yeah, I was just going to say it's the designation that is a problem with that is, you know, they can't they can't just go lobby for hunters. In, in contrary, most cases. contrary to popular belief by one of our esteemed or new or political advocacy organization <laughs> who is 100% a political advocacy organization and still has organized themselves under a 501c3 illegal yeah you can't have a 501c3 and be involved with with politics type stuff now you yeah. can get involved with with is, uh, and so okay let, uh, let me let me cr- let me correct that then okay qualify or qualify some of what you're talking about, this is where the organizations are, are, are unwilling to, to wade in the weeds. Some of what you're talking about, yes, legal stuff. Yes. That's they what I'm might talking be able about. To get into. Okay. If it starts getting into legal stuff that has political stuff attached to it, they'll, no, they'll, they'll bow out. They'll bow out. But the problem is, is their mission statement is also going to be a guiding principle on what they do and how they structure. And that's and, and, and that's and, built with that 501c3. Uh, they have to it. have that mission statement in order yeah. to qualify for the 501c3. And so and then they're going to have to go to their membership and get that buy in and then make, so they're okay. it's not that they couldn't do it. Now I, I know for a fact that the, that you know Elk Foundation and NWTF and other people will 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 file just a, a letter, you know, like uh, we support we support like but I'm talking about no. We need to be hiring big ass, big heavy hitting fucking attorneys. Yeah, that have this, been uh, in that's, district court 
they which can walk in and they're like, oh shit, he's. We here. have to be willing. We have to be willing to spend more money as sportsmen for this kind of cause. Like this, in my opinion, I've done a little bit of research on this. We, it, this needs to be a for profit organization. Screw this whole not not for profit shit. This has to be a for profit. That doesn't mean it. I don't know yeah, if I'm explaining this right. You can, you can, you can, you got five hundred one. Sure, you, you do. You, you got other organizations. I mean, NRA's got. Their, you do. Their, yes, yes. I, I I agree with all that, but uh, the it it concerns me because um, and actually, I kind of want to take a quick little pause here, but it concerns me because you know we all did this poll. I did the poll, which the exact question was on this poll. Um, hunting as conservation. If tag prices increase to pay for habitat improvement, was that the one we all did? Or yeah, well, or I, I did. You guys I did, did one. Yeah. I did one that was like, um, would you be willing to? Oh, this is what it is. If tag prices increase to pay for habitat improvement, right? Uh, a, I would double my resident tag prices, which got uh, that garnered forty eight percent of the the, uh, the votes. B, I would pay an extra 20 bucks for a resident tag, 34%. C, I would pay an extra 5 bucks, 6%. D, hell no, I pay enough, 12%. Um, it, it was, it was good to hear that the, the lion's share, the hunters out there would be willing to, you know, double their tag prices. For me, that would mean, you know, for an elk tag, instead of 35 bucks, I'd be paying 70 bucks. I would do that all day long and twice on Sunday. Like it, it, that, not even a question. I would quad up. I would pay four times as much to go out and and have that tag and that ability to go out. It's right? just, you, yeah, it's not that big of a, like, Chris has a shit-eating grin going on over there. But, <laughs> but like, I, I don't understand why people would not hit the, I would pay double to be the only ones that contribute to habitat and conservation efforts. And be the ones that carry that purse into the legislative sessions. Hey, we're the ones that actually pay for this. Truly, we are the ones that actually pay for this stuff. What are you shit eating grinning over there about, Chris? <laughs> the audience can't actually see the video, but dude, the, the, what's funny is I I was involved with the politics back in Colorado when Colorado passed the the habitat stamp. The Colorado Habitat Stamp and the amount of vitriol and hatred and people that were like, this is a bunch of fucking bullshit. Why are we having to spend more money on a habitat stamp when we're already spending money and funding the agency and doing these things? The non-consumptive users need to start pitching and blah, blah, blah. Uh, there was this massive, this crazy. massive, massive, massive. Um, uh, I mean, it was a massive debate on the habitat stamp. And then when it finally was like, okay, we're going to have a habitat stamp. How much is it? Oh, freaking hell. And I remember, and I will, I will own it. Um, I, I remember a past president of Rocky mountain bighorn society who was, who sat on the habitat stamp committee in a, uh, we were down at the Capitol one day talking about it. And, and he wanted to charge like way more than double, like, a hundred dollars or I mean like he he was like let's raise this thing because everybody everybody that's buying the habitat stamp now remember it was mandated that sport you know hunters had to buy it like okay you that's what I was gonna ask you I didn't because yeah, I don't know hundred yeah it wasn't volunteer not, yeah it was not volunteer you had to buy that in order to have your vet your license valid so he was saying oh no we need to raise this up because why wouldn't anybody we we need to be the ones funding the habitat I disagreed with him at the time um, I don't, I mean, maybe I would disagree with him on the, the amount, but regardless, I've, my, I've changed on some of my ideas, but that was what I was going to ask about is because there's certain states out there now that charge a habitat stamp fee that I, I know for a fact that listening to my friends and other people that just bitch and bitch and complain about having to buy a habitat stamp. And I know, I, but I don't under, I, I don't understand it. Like, l like last summer, last summer, Dirk, uh, you guys know Dirk Durham. Him and I Who's put that? on this Who's seminar. That? Who? Dirt? AKA what? the Bugler. The Bugler. Some people know him. He's what, also. What's, what's her at? What's what's her at? Her name is the Bugler. <laughs> at, at the Bugler. Dirk Diggler? <laughs> so, <laughs> Dirk Dugity. Uh, that sounds Durham. like that sounds like somebody on a site you shouldn't be going to, Jim. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I, I try to be as honest as possible when I'm recording these. So <laughs> so Dirk and I, we, we put on this elk. 
hunting seminar last summer. Uh, and it's for like, you know, uh, just a local one here in North Idaho kind of thing. And, um, we, got, we had to like rent this facility and, and, uh, buy all the lunch and, and, you know, get it catered kind of thing. And there was a lot of expenses. So we charged, uh, I, I don't remember if it was 75 bucks or 79 99 per person to come. Either way, that's double the Idaho elk tag cost. This sucker sold out in like two weeks. Oh yeah, I, and, and I, I'm happy for it. I, it was great. It was awesome. Um, I don't even think it took two weeks because we limited it to you know like 50 people or something. It was a great show up, or showing. Everybody showed up. It was a great event. But the 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 point I'm trying to make is like it's so easy to spend 75 bucks on something like that. Equated, but, okay, so doubling so, the so, elk tag is a problem. September September is a month long, right? Just use the Colorado elk season, right? right? Yeah, a couple yeah, days. Great, I know where you're going with this. I love it. What Keep does going. it cost, Jim? What does it cost you when you and Mama and the kids go out to have dinner? What What's the cost oh, of that? Freaking hundred hundred bucks minimum at a cheap right? place, Chris. What for you and and the missus? What sixty, oh, yeah. seventy, eighty bucks? Yeah, you're you're least well where we are. We don't have fancy places, so you're yeah, you're they're... at least dropping fifty bucks minimum. Okay, so fifty bucks, right? Now, if you, it, I said I'd be willing to pay four times as much for for a resident elk tag. So call it forty five bucks for the tag. That brings you up to one hundred and eighty dollars, right? That's that's I'm so essentially I'm paying forty five dollars a week for the entire month of September, which I've spent almost the entire month out, if not the entire month out. The shit that's cheap. If I take my wife out to eat, it's a hundred dollars a pop. Yeah, it's a hundred dollars a pop. And I, when we were talking earlier, I told you Friday nights are date nights with Mama. Period. Point blank. Friday except except September. <laughs> Friday nights are date night. So I. Throughout the year, I'm spending that money, right? Whether it's every other week, every two weeks or whatever, but I'm not willing as a sportsman to put my money where my mouth is and back my shit up and be willing to pay more for the opportunity and then to have a voice in this at, at $40 a week. We're spending that shit anyway. Half of us are, are latte freaks. And I see these motherfuckers sitting in a line at the local coffee huts and Starbucks as I drive by in the morning. Um, it's not that much money. I mean, guys. you could go on, you could go on the entire rest of this podcast could be spent on comparing what we spend on, on what maybe a 70 oh, or an 85 or $185 elk tag. Like even back in my twenties when I was poor, uh, look, look, yeah. What, what knife is that? The what, Hugo knife? This is, this is silverware. What did that little pocket knife cost me? Shit. Right. That, right. What did that little tiny fucking pocket knife cost me? But I'm not willing to up my ante. On my even, tag price, yeah, and even <laughs> you know what I mean. Even the younger, even the younger dudes. You know, I remember when I was when I was uh, in my twenties and didn't have a lot of money. Family just starting out, uh, you, you know. So, so you guys listening that are that are in that in that boat rowing that paddle, understand that we've all been there too. But I still see you all out there posting in twelve hundred dollars worth of freaking kuyu attire, and 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 everything else. So, like, don't give me this shit that you can't afford it fuck i i've seen what you guys are posting you can freaking afford it and and it's, it just drives me bananas that people are unwilling to increase the tag sale and, and i i got some messages well we'd have to know how they are allocating that money really do you know where they're allocating it now because i've been trying to figure out what the what the percentage breakdown is for your deer tag cost and and the 30 cents that comes out of that for habitat improvement and and tr- so i could break that down for people and guess what i can't find that information i can't find yeah. it anywhere okay like i have it for colorado ooh did, did, did you give get it, it to us yes i have it what what for this past year uh, this is yeah, twenty one, twenty two total parks and wildlife expenditures, two point seven six million. Um, I, I I have the whole. Let me see. I might. Well, no, I guess. No, 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 no. Yeah, More yeah, than yeah. That. That's no. that's just that, that. Is that the the fish and game expenditures? Yeah. Um, okay, hold on. See. Oh, I can. Can I screen share on this? Should be able to. Yeah, go down to the bottom and it says share screen. Click on that. Oh, look at that. Look at the little green little bleak. Okay. Can you see it? Not yet. Jim did something. Oh, uh, Jim, uh, you have it disabled. Hold on. I need you to go on. down and let me go. And, let me see. It. It's hard to get good help these days. There. I swear. <laughs> now try, dude. 
I think I know what happened to the commercial I tried to play, by the way, earlier today and er, yeah. earlier in this. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to replay that one for you guys. Um, You're gonna shit your britches. Share, can you guys see that? There we go. Okay, yeah, now we can no. see that. Uh okay. Okay, oh. I was gonna say you said two something million. I was like, that needs to have like a zero after. Like uh, yeah, okay. All right, hey, right, right. Can you scroll back up to that chart? Can you see this one? Oh wait, god damn it, why did it do that? Son of a biscuit. Bunch of Amateur hour, man. Amateur, amateurs around here. If this talk. was Joe Rogan, he'd have that dude in the background. He, that shit would be up. Hey, in like Jamie, two pull seconds. up. Uh... Jamie, pull it up, brother. <laughs> Not on ours. Hold on. Right, keep this going. Is, You're good. This is just some yeah, keep scrolling down, man. I think no, it gets. It's... Let me see. It's no, no. I tried to move it over and I grabbed some other crap and I have no idea how I pulled the little green glow. Good off Lord. This. Good hey, man. Lord. Hey. I tell you what. Hold all on, right, so all, all hold, I on, saw... hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I got it. I, I figured out how to do it. Everybody Wait, listening, no. screaming at the dashboard right now. Oh, there now, we go. Now we're now we're talking. Now oh, we're talking. Okay. 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 okay you so said two million. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I said. I think I said two hundred seventy million. Three. Oh, uh, three hundred and forty-one million fiscal year uh, revenue. Well, that's revenue. This is this is revenue. Okay. So that's this is and it breaks down the funding sources for her, so all parks and wildlife revenue. So three four one million Colorado parks revenue one hundred and thirty million wildlife revenue one nine eight and then where the money goes all parks and wildlife expenditures two hundred and seventy six million organizational support, hunting 30%. and environment and wildlife education. Two percent. Oh, that was not what I thought. Well, Species convers- uh, conservation. Conservation. Four percent. Yep. Wow. Bingo, baby. Four percent. So take your thirty-five dollar tag in times by point zero four and see what that number is. In fact, I'll just do it right now. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't, sorry, don't, don't. Sorry, 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 sorry. What's so your you deer have... tag cost? Is it is it thirty-five bucks? Call it forty-five. Okay, I think. Hold on. Let's let's not throw the agency under the bus here. Let's look at this. A dollar eighty. So where the expenditure goes, you have species conservation, which you just said was 4%. 4%, yep. Okay. However, on the left-hand side, you have habitat management. That's 19%, 19. okay? So there's going to be some people who say, okay, so habitat management, species conservation, that's 23%. Yeah, where'd my damn pen go? There it is. Uh, there you go. There, I mean, to, so twenty, so twenty three percent of your money goes towards habitat and species conservation. So, so Colorado actually is is better than what I found in a lot of states. So that's ten dollars and thirty five cents on a deer tag. Okay, that's before that habitat stamp. I, I, well, no, that's not before the habitat stamp. Oh, you guys get. uh uh, I think lottery habitat money. Stamp, I, well, yeah, go co. I, I think the habitat stamp money is. We'll have to pick this apart more. Yeah, uh, we'd have to pick that apart more. I'm talking about the overall revenue, that top number. Um, right. I think that includes the habitat stamp, uh, but that still breaks down the same way on a forty five dollar deer tag to ten dollars and thirty five cents. So right? here, let's look at our wildlife expenditures one one hundred and sixty one million. Fishing work, yeah. habitat management, twenty one percent. So then where is our license and registration is 7%. So species conservation is 6% and hunt, hunting habitat management is 21%. 21. So 27%, 27% of so your money is going on the ground. 27%. That's that's better than um, some of the other states I've I've actually been able to track down. Whoops, shit. So Jim, to your to what you criticized earlier when you, when people say, okay, and and I agree with it. By the way, I agree with some of the criticism if you just generally increase your license tax, your license fee, mm-hmm. what you're doing is you're just doubling or tripling or quadrupling the general funds going to the agency. Yeah. Doesn't that doesn't mean you're doubling, you know, you're 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 not necessarily earmarking those funds to go to something to something specific like habitat right. improvement. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And I, I agree now, with that premise. If we're gonna double the tags, there would have to be accountability as to where that extra money is going. How about this? And this is gonna bake some people's noodles. <laughs> many, many, many <laughs> states 
already have the mechanism by which that that ability is absolutely built into the the process and it's absolutely voluntary and you can actually spend as much money as you want and you can get something out of it even beyond the habitat. Mm -hmm. It's called the governor's auction and raffle tags. Those elk tags, those mule deer tags, those sheep tags, those goat tags, the moose tags that states will auction off or they will offer raffles for the governor's tag. You can buy as many tickets as you want. You can spend as much money as you want. And you have a chance at actually drawing that tag and getting a hunting tag that allow you to go any open unit, blah, 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 whatever the state is. But here's the thing. Those funds already have a built-in accountability mechanism because those funds are only to be used on the ground habitat projects for those species. And that's where, where... In, in Colorado, you have deer, elk, moose, no, deer, elk, and pronghorn, and then I think it's moose, bighorn, sheep, and goat. So they split them up that way. So all the money that's generated from the deer tags, all the money that's generated from the elk tags, all the, gener- the money that's generated from the pronghorn tags, all go into one pot, and those that money has to go back on the ground for habitat improvement projects or enhancement projects or, you know, it's got to go back on the ground for those species and those habitats. And then the sheep, goat, and moose, that goes into its own pot. And that money that is generated through those sales goes back on the ground for those species. So if you want, if you're sitting here saying, I want to spend more, I would be willing to spend more money to put more habitat stuff on the ground. There's your mechanism. Yeah. Yep. There's exactly. And I think that that kind of speaks to the concept that we talked about earlier in an earlier episode of where some conservation or I'm sorry, some hunting pays for some conservation. Well, Uh, and let's let me let me when as Chris was talking, it popped in my head. So not so when we talk about when we talk about habitat management um and species conservation now this is not just sportsman's dollars per se this is ohv licensing uh snowmobile boating things like that those registrations are also paid for cpw that's a good point guy so there's some input from you know maybe those aren't hunters or maybe it's off season but there's some input from recreators on the ground too when it comes to what we're looking at here yeah um so there is other input so there to, in my head as we talk about an increase um yeah okay no that's a that's a great point right so you know what i mean so there's even more reason to up our ante in it because it's not all just generated from sportsmen there yeah um Hey, how do you close that out, man? You gave me an idea. Like there, that? Oh, there, there we go. I, I want to try something here. It's driving me Who crazy. It? What's driving me crazy, man? Can you guys? Can you guys hear this? Did you hear now, that piano sound? Yes. I now just I can. heard that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, let's take, I saw let's your take a commercial. Let's, let's take a life was okay. Can you hear it? The empty yeah. sadness was tolerable, but something was missing. I tuned in to the Row Hunting Resources podcast, and things seemed to get better. I found Western Contours with Guy Duplant, du, Duplanche, du, Duplant, or whatever, fucking Creole names, and life seemed more tolerable. My urge to cross-dress went down, and I even considered going hunting. But still, I was suffering. The more I listened to these two podcasts, the more I felt my manhood drift into my distant past. I experienced depression, questioned my gender, bought a Biden bumper sticker, and had severe bout of public anal leakage. (laughs) But then, my doctor prescribed the Western Huntsman podcast, and I took it in like the sailor I never was. After a month, my confidence strengthened my balls dropped, and my road rage incidents became ever more violent like a real man. Ha ha ha! 
I am now on top of the world. Finally, a podcast that allows me to be the man I always knew I was. A host who fucked up more elk hunts than me. I sold my makeup and dresses and traded in my sissy white claw for Coors Light and long chest hair. Thank you, the Western Huntsman Podcast. Not legal in all states. There we go. Uh, you work. said, dude, you've been telling me and Chris that you've been plowing snow and working on the homestead. You've been doing right. commercials. Right. You've been plowing <laughs> something else is what it sounds yeah. like. Oh, man. I made that like Love a week it. ago, man, and I figured out how to That's share That's awesome. It. <laughs> All right. It, 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 it's, okay. Just for you guys. Just for now, you guys. Now, just, now, awesome. now it gives me something to work on. See? No, there's no payback allowed. That, that's just, <laughs> oh, you, <know. laughs> you didn't read the fine print. I, I especially <laughs> like the, the your balls drop finally, so that's good. <laughs> All right. Uh, we well, y- you know, when we're having these serious conversations, sometimes it's good to throw in a little little shit talking. Yeah, it's pretty good, brother. That was absolutely. Um, it, any final thoughts for you guys on uh, on everything we've been talking about here? Oh, are we going to talk about the bullets link? that we that you sent over? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that's what I was pulling up. I'm like, dude, you have any feelings? We just scratched one off the list. You like said, uh, eight, I don't know how many did you said. You're like, I want to talk about these four. things. I'm like, yeah, right. I I really want to talk about the the what we what we consider bad press. That the, that number four. I'm down with that. I mean, I, I I would really like to talk about that one at some point. What and talk about? I don't it now. know if I'm, I mean, I got time. I okay, I I'm good. Too. I had a nap if, before if we you did guys, it. If you guys are good, I'm good. I Chris I just want a night owl. <laughs> yeah, Chris is a night owl. It's eleven. It's eleven thirty here or eleven twenty. Here. Oh, is it really? Shit, man! I always forget you're so far ahead. It's only nine twenty here. I'm always uh, ahead. Yeah, yeah. You, you're head of the pack, brother. I'm um, down if Chris is down. It's up to you. Let's just talk about it from the perspective of like we're not we're not telling anybody what they can and can't do, right? I I just here we are. I think it's <laughs> time we start thinking about some of the shit people are posting, and I'm guilty. I you know I, I'm guilty of it. Um, but how how do we how do we come up with and who decides? What is okay to post and what's not okay to post, and and in your minds, what what is like cringe worthy that you guys have uh, been seeing lately? From the hunting community, by the way, that, that's that's kind of what we're uh, obviously talking about here. From from hunters, what is cringe worthy uh, that you guys have seen lately that uh, has been being posted, and it's just like you, you see it, and it's like, geez, man, what the fuck were you thinking? Well, I mean, there's there's always I mean, there's uh, okay, so I there, jeez. <laughs> if if people are listening to this and they truly have no idea what we're talking about as far as like what, what like what do you mean a bad post where they, okay you need to get out of your silo like you you need to you need to just start going and searching other pages on your on your social media uh accounts that way the algorithm starts throwing you more random stuff so that it's just not showing you the same you know thing that you know you always like to you engage in um, there's all sorts of stuff out there these days. There was, I mean, hell, there was one even just recently. Um, but for me, I don't know if there's any, you know, like one, any, I don't think there's like one single standard, you know, like, oh, this is the standard. I, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I don't, don't think so either. But if, if, if it was for me to make a standard, it'd be like, does your post, and I know exactly how this is going to sound. <laughs> Does your post reasonably express a level of empathy for the critter that you're displaying that the average person would like? How, how, I don't know how I want to put it, but like, it, did your post? Did the if an if the average person in public were to view your post, would they look at that and say that you did a it was reasonably empathetic to the animal that you are that you're you're displaying? Obviously, the anti hunters are be like any dead animal. Oh, that's bullshit. Blah, blah, blah. No, okay, no. Uh, you, uh, yeah, you we're not worried about the anti hunters with that because they're they're going to hate everything. I think that uh, I mm. I like the way. 
that you oh, put keep it. Going. Yeah, keep going. I, I like the way that you put it. One one way I've I've put it is, um, it's not the anti hunters. It's 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 the non hunters. Is yes. is your are you posting this to be a sensationalized hunting hero to get a bunch of likes and 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 reactions, uh, and and not thinking about the non hunter that sees that that might be totally turned off with what you just put on the internet. Um, I, I think that that's one way to put it. Uh, hey guys, I, I need to go check a very loud bang that just took place out by my chicken coop. I, um, keep the conversation going. I'll be back shortly. I just want to make sure there's, uh, no coyotes out there sneaking around because my old man of a guard dog. We'll go doing check them. Job. Stop delaying. Yeah, they're getting eaten. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he's exactly. Like chitter, chatter, chitter, chatter, chatter. There's a lot of, it's I gotta go it's check. It's <laughs> Let me give you a, a summary of what I'm gonna do when I'm out there. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, oh, it's they're funny. all dead. Damn it. <laughs> it's funny that Jim brought that up because when I was I was driving back from Front Range today and I was listening to your episode and and I actually started thinking about this and I'm like, well, if they're gonna come after us any damn way, and if they're gonna just keep pressing and and keep moving that square, does it matter what we post at this point? If if that's what we're up against and we we seem to lack the support of the people in the middle ground. And and honestly, I think most of those people are so consumed with other BS that we probably don't matter as much as we think we do. I go ahead. I, I will disagree. Okay. Um respectfully, because no, I don't think that they are again the middle people. Okay. We're talking about the non hunter, the average non hunting person out there. I, I don't think that they are against us. I, I think most of them don't have an opinion. And and what did I say with regard to my background? When when I was working with Blacktail Prairie Dogs in that very contentious environment, when we when the activists had been had worked their their way into a policy setting position where they were they were running the show essentially and setting city code, county code, you know, ordinances, that type of stuff. The average public, when they started to feel the pain of that, when I and my wife, when, when Roe Ecological Services stepped in and provided an alternative, the average person, it was like 80 some percent of the public went straight to us and they were like, that is reasonable. What you propose is empathetic. It's ecologically responsible. It helps the prairie dog meet a portion of its ecological pur- purpose on the landscape. It, it agrees with some of what the activists want. It allows flexibility, what we, what the society wants. Row ecological services pr- position is the most reasonable in the room. Absolutely overwhelming. Eighty plus percent of the people were on board with that idea. Okay, they had, maybe the, the, maybe they, I said it wrong. Okay, go ahead. Maybe I said that wrong. They generally, until they are affected, don't care. They don't care that we're out there doing what we're doing. Okay, there you go. They're neutral. Right. They're neutral. Right. They're, on they're it, in right? the middle. They're in the middle, and they're not even looking half the time. Okay. I, now here's here's where again I will respectfully disagree mildly with you. Insofar as, given the fact that, and uh, so, uh, one of my listeners brought it up, um, was it Selway Archery? Uh, Sorry about that. Brought, no, no, you're worries, good. Brother. Um, so, I think it was Selway Archery brought it up. Is you know ta- he wanted me to talk about uh, whether you know the democracy of wildlife management is actually a good thing. D- the democracy in in wildlife management. Can you expand it's, on it's, that? What does that mean? I, I know I'm just well, kind of stepping back in. If you look at in. one of one of the found, the foundation of foundational principles of the North mm-hmm. American model of wildlife conservation is wildlife is managed. Well, I guess you could look it up, but it's basically the democracy of of what where it's it's for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're rich, you're poor, you own land, you don't own land. It doesn't matter who you are, your race, your your skin, your your skin color, your race, your economic abilities. It do, doesn't matter who you are. You have access Gender. to it, and 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 you have an equal you have an equal ability to partake in the consumptive use lifestyle. Okay, mm-hmm. 
that has been bastard. And, and um, that's going to be a, a bigger discussion on my end in the future, but I think that's been bastardized over time. However, to your point, Guy, the general public is unaware and just doesn't care. They don't have a, an opinion. But look what happened in Colorado with the Wolf Initiative. It passed by 0.91% of the vote. Yep. It was a freaking frog's hair. And yet, because it was, even though it was that fine in, in any, and this is the point I made in mind is any reasonable governor should have looked at that and said, okay, we're, we're 50 50. Like we're equally split. So yes, they, they, yes, we want, yes, they, Wolf Advocates won, but this is not a mandate. We really ought to just baby step our way into this and be very careful of this, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But they didn't do that. Right. So 0.91% majority. And now we have a fundamental transformation of what Colorado is going to look like in the future. Mm -hmm. This is where that neutral middle is going to be so important because when these conversations come up and when these debates come up in the public forum, if they stumble upon the hunting community and their influence ends up being the likes of Meat Eater, the likes of Remy Warren, those people that go out and, and do a really good job of, of articulating. I, I don't care about the po- politics of Steve Ranella or any. I, I don't give a shit about that. Yeah. I'm talking about what they portray hunting to be on the landscape. If that's who they stumble into, then they're going to have a favorable view of hunting. Now, granted, the activists are going to turn around and, be, and they're going to try to find every ounce of egregious bullshit that they could find to throw against that. The more they can find, the more likely they are going to persuade the average neutral per- public. Oh, maybe this hunting thing isn't that good. Maybe these guys are just bloodthirsty trophy killers that just want to just disrespect animals and they have no empathy for them. And they, and it doesn't match what they value as far as their engagement in animals, whether it's their pets. Whether it's the, the, the ducks that are out on the, the, the retention pond in their back subdivision. If it's the prairie dogs that they see on their walk next to the, the open space, whatever their concept and value is for wildlife, they're going to, they're on the, on the court of public opinion. They're going to see examples of who we are. And then they're going to judge their value for us based on what they see. And so this is where I think. We do need, we, I understand the, the ability or the value for us to have the ability to have our community and share within our community. If you're going to do that, then, and you're going to post some kind of more egregious things, then keep your page private. Yeah. Now, granted, that's going to affect your ability to monetize and get likes. And get exposure and get pro- like uh, you're not going to get the number of accolades that you want and, and that, that positive feedback, but you keep some of that egregious stuff private. But if you're going to be public and you, and especially if you're going to promote yourself and you're going to try to generate, you're going to use social media to generate your identity on the landscape, dude, you've got to be, you've got to be flying so freaking high above board these days that I think that's where it comes down. To my opinion. Chris Rose's opinion is, does your post express even a modicum of respect and empathy for the for the critter that you are displaying and showing? Agreed. Yeah, I agree with so, that. So uh, we didn't even really get into the answer. I, I posed Chris a question because I was listening to his podcast today and I'm like, it just can't, you know, it was like, well, shit, if that's what we're up against anyway, what, you know. The question is, does it even matter? Because that's one of the things that people will, you know, man, you, you know, is it really a problem that I'm posting this? I think I told you guys, a guy at work came up to me and was showing me, you know, and is this really a problem? And I, in my yeah. opinion, yeah, it's a problem. Um, so if I can real quick, I'll answer the question. What's cringeworthy? Um, the circle of death thing, absolutely cringeworthy. 
you know, trapping. Them. Yeah. Yeah. I hate Being it. Up on I, an animal I fucking and, hate that one. You know, the, the, uh, I especially do not care for the headshot stuff. Um, it happens, but don't post that. Shit, what, what do you mean headshot? You mean you, taking a trapped animal in the head or, or are you any talking animal, about the after any shot animal, picture? I I, any, any <laughs> animal that's, that's bug, bug eyed laying there with his tongue hanging out his damn mouth and it's been shot in the head. Don't post it. Oh, shit. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Don't post okay. it. No one, no one is going to look at that and say, oh, that's fucking cool. That no one's yeah. gonna who who wrong wrong. There's there's a lot of people that will because all that, you that are to gonna say that that's a good shot. That's cool. A hundred percent. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, dude. Right. I, I, okay, so and and I <sighs> fuck it. I don't give a shit. Go anybody that doesn't understand what we're talking about. Go to kill shot kill shot central. Go look up Instagram, Instagram right. At Kill Shot. Shot Central. Yeah. Now, oh, I'm about to get pissed. I already know it. So, there are some things in there, like I've seen some of the deer hunts and some of the elk hunts, and and the shot is taken, boom, and I mean they, it's a great shot. It's an ethical shot. It's in a, it's, I mean, there's there, I see, I watch a post that they'll put up, and I see zero issues with it because it's like, oh hell, that was a nice. I mean, it was a good ethical shot. It was a great clean shot. It was, I mean, every, everything was absolutely awesome about it. And then they've got other shit and I'll just yeah, leave yeah. it at that. And so if yeah. you don't think that there are people out there, and this is where, again, we go back to that, what I was talking about earlier, the dark triad ad where a lot of psychologists are now because, especially because of social media and the influence of social media on societies where you start adding in that sadism. Uh, sadistic behavior is just the, the enjoyment of pain in a, you know, like you, you enjoy watching pain and suffering of others, yeah. you know, the misery yeah. of others. And so there is a, an element now into social media these days where sadist, sadism and, and sadistic tendencies are allowed to flourish and are actually encouraged. And you can choose your own community this sick twisted sadistic shit and you can have that fed to you as much as you want kill shot central is one of those places where you can go and i mean i was watching one where there's no context to it where they're just in a jeep an open top jeep it looks like oh, maybe south africa or texas or I what i said to this. Yeah, they're they're basically chasing down uh an ostrich this ostrich is running down the road full tilt they are just flooring the jeep about to run over the thing and the guy just takes a shotgun and boom head shoots the 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 ostrich and it just goes tumbling off in the ditch and you know they drive by laughing oh. yeah okay hold on a minute what the fuck are we doing like yep i don't even if you gave me like i don't i can't even imagine the gentle or the the, the mental gymnastics you're gonna have to go through to give me the picture of where that activity was dire necessity. And I, you, you might be able to do the mental gymnastic to show me where that was exactly what needed to happen to that animal at that time. You will never convince me that that should have been posted on social media. That's, and that's, that's the where thing. I got the problem. The, that here, here's where, here's my take on that. Cause I saw that video too. I think it is one you shared with us. Yeah. Um, I don't God, remember seeing that God, one. guy that, that pooch behind you. He's, he's, he's turned into a handsome fellow, man. Oh, yeah, he is, man. Yeah. He's he, like he's his daddy. Big, <laughs> big. Oh, man. Anyway, um, what I think, I think a, a key element to this is, you know, as, as a hunter, I don't, I, I like to see kill shots when I seek them out. Hosting them for the general public to see is where where I kind of have a problem. Like, are you are you watching that that ostrich one? Is oh that no, I just found a just bear, a different dude. one. Okay, I found a bear. So like, what I guess dude, what I'm yeah. what I'm trying to say is yeah. like like if if you if you want to show the kill shot in your YouTube video, it's going to be ninety nine point nine 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 percent hunters that go to your YouTube channel to watch that kind of stuff, and and it, that's that in my mind is way different. Uh, than seeing a uh, an ostrich shot on a public forum on 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 fucking Instagram, uh, 
on reels. Yeah. On reels that gets, you know, if you, if you go into that other part of Instagram where you can just watch a bunch of reels, you know, that's yep. where that'll pop up. People no, that know it, nothing no, no, about, there's it. no context. Yep. People have no idea what the fuck just happened. They, they don't know if that was legal, illegal. They don't know if ostriches are, uh, yeah, you know, on the brink of extinction or whether they're not. They, they don't know that kind of stuff. All they know is what they just saw disturbed them. And then that represents the hunting community as a whole. And that's why, you know, I and we had this conversation internally um, where and I think it's important that I talk about it. But but Eastman's controls and and posts a lot of stuff for me on my Instagram. Um, they do two or three posts a week for me. Uh, all the all the uh, other stuff is me, obviously. But and, and I'm the only one that answers the, the I had this question. I'm the only one that answers and checks the the direct messages. So don't don't bother with that. But. Uh, but, but Eastman's does a couple of posts a week for me and, and we had to have a discussion because Eastman's has, you know, decades of, uh, th- this kind of content built up in the repertoire. And so they'll, they'll throw it on mine to help, help me grow it. And I, I don't know my only motivation to grow an Instagram page is to get more listeners to my podcast. I, I don't, I don't care about anything. I know that there's uh, apparently you can make money if you have a bunch of followers or whatever, not my thing. Um, so I had to have the discussion with him and, and uh, the guy that does the posting, he actually agrees with what we're talking about. Um, and, and, and we had the discussion where I'm, I'm super leery, man. I don't, I don't want you posting kill shots on my page. Um, and it, because there has been a few of them posted there and it's just not something I post. It, and, at least, at least without co- any sort of construct context. context. Yes. Right. Some kind of like, context. Wh- wh- why? Like, why am I, I watching like that? seeing it. I like seeing, I, I will like they, they posted this, uh, uh, it was a it, it was a rifle kill on an uh, on this elk, and it was a long distance shot. It was cool to see how the bullet, the ballistics worked, and where that entered the body. Uh, I, I don't I like seeing that stuff, but if there was no context behind it, and and do I want like my my uh, my aunt Janice, for example, do I want her seeing that kind of stuff? No, I really don't. She's not a hunter. She doesn't understand. She doesn't. She she would look at that and think that we're just a bunch of bloodthirsty killers out for out for blood and glory. And, and so that's the kind of stuff that I worry about. It's it's not that I'm personally offended by it. It's that I am personally concerned about the non hunting yes. public that that sees that and and how that portrays us as hunters and then you take that a step do they misinterpret it especially when there's no context and then you take that a step further to um those those more egregious these these people that have you know this this fucking proclivity to to post this coyote with his foot in a foothold and and all you see is the tip of the rifle come in and boom that goddamn coyote's head just splits open like a canoe i i hate that stuff like that bothers me and I am a combat Marine. I That still bothers me. I don't want to see that stuff. I don't want to see a coyote's head explode, point blank shot, and hear it yelping. And, and, then, and then to further make that worse, think that my, again, I'll use Aunt Janice as an example, comes across that video. It's not like that's in like a, you know how Facebook has the groups? You know, uh, hunting, trapping of Idaho or whatever. Okay, I can get that. You want to share that kind of stuff there. If it's a private group, they're the only ones that see it. Uh, a case could be made to post that there. But to just post that on your personal page when you've got a thousand friends connected or whatever, that stuff bothers me. And I think that that is going to be what is portrayed because people will see that and that negative reaction that they have is going to outweigh the 10 positive reactions of other posts that they see from hunters. And I, and I and the, don't want oh, people to take me wrong right. with like, I don't care if you post a, a grip and grin. I, I don't, I, I mean, I post them. I like those. I, I like to see that kind of stuff. I like to see the caliber of bucks or elk or whatever that people are getting and bears and everything else. I, I'm not, I'm not disparaging that at all. It's the, unnecessary uh uniquely grotesque um kill shot kind of stuff that lack context or the even further the beaten up a wounded deer 
because you're a drunk teenager or pouring beer down a cavity of a of, of a hanging deer carcass and shooting it out of the nostrils. You know, that kind of stuff. I do need to be punching his Un- fucking lips. Absolutely unacceptable. You have no idea how much damage you do to the future of hunting when you do that well, kind of stuff. Just, Guy, if you don't mind, real quick, keep in mind, during the Wildlife Commission meeting last week, audible testimony one of the wolf advocates just pulled up her phone and she was she read off from the Colorado Parks and Wildlife Facebook page she just flipped through the comments and was like here's one says shoot shovel and shut up here's one i'm going to kill every wolf i see here's one i'm you know sh- kill those fucking but yeah. she just went off and just read the comments that were that were posted on a Colorado Parks and Wildlife Facebook page. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. That's all she did. <laughs> That's, That's it right there. Did. She was That's like, it right this, there. Is, this is, and this is why they shut down the phase four language. She's like, you guys have no, basically it was, you have no intention to, to follow the law because this is illegal. This is, you guys have every intention to, to, to break the law and you have every intention to kill wolves. So no way are yep. we going to allow you to put this language in there because this is what you want to do. So screw you. So like, that, I was like, Mike, drop, is, walk away. Yep. And, that, and, that is the point of, of everything we've been saying when it comes to post and why, why we have to be cautious and conscientious and respectful to people that are outside of our circles when we're posted. Like me, I, I I'll admit I'm a bit extreme. Like if I have, if I'm taking a grip and grin, I'll either wipe all the blood off. The tongue is getting put in the mouth or it's getting cut off or I'm Photoshopping all the blood out. I will not have, if it's on the ground, it's on the ground. I'll even throw dirt on it. I'm extreme, but my concern is exactly what. Chris was saying right now, that's my concern. I want to do the best I can for our demographic and our way of life. And that is my input to that. But yep. I'm watching you guys got me on this damn kill. They're, dude, they I, are to- some, I, I told you there's, it's- some, there's some bitch and shots on here. And then no, there's it's, shit it's, on here. It's entertaining, man. That, that kind of stuff. It's, it's interesting to is, watch is, it, but they, man, it is like there, some grotesque zero shit. context. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zero. It, Every single it's, post. Zero. It's all. It's all. It's all for the glorification of that, and that's the problem. Sensationalization. It, yeah. Bingo. And then, okay, so Jim, let's let's go ahead and segue back to a conversation that you had with Public Enemy Number One, Matt Ranella. Yeah. And so Matt, again, I don't agree with a lot of. Okay, so I agree with a lot of the front end of what Matt Ranella is upset about. The further down the road, he, the more he talks about what his motivations are, his value sets, and what he wants to do about it, this is where we diverge and we go different ways, and I don't agree with him. But yeah. he talks about this this social media, and his one of his big yanks is about the monetization and the, the <clears throat> economic incentives people get from the the social media and quite honestly the social media algorithm which feeds into the narcissism the machiavellian type of especially the sadism where if you you post more egregious more shocking things especially now in the algorithms uh, on instagram with reels because instagram wants to compete with tiktok so they're promoting reels more you're, you, there are those people that are not thinking beyond their own selfish interests of, I need to grow my brand. I need to grow my business. I need to grow my followers. I need to get more engagement. I need to, I need to play yeah. the numbers, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So by default, the algorithm is going to essentially start to force them to post more and more sensationalized or more and more egregious content. I recently called out someone. They're a very well-known photography page. They're incredibly talented people, uh, very, very talented people. Their images are used all over the sportsman industry. Uh, uh, they're very, very talented. And they recently posted a reel, and it was just simply a dead bison carcass just just tumbling harsh, just down a freaking hill. Oh, just, yeah, I saw that one. 
I know and what I, you're talking about. And and I and I immediately I was like, why? Like, like no context, no nothing. All it was is the sensational I this this image of this this bison carcass falling down a hill with this country music track playing to it. Yeah. Now keep in mind this group has already said that they have had, you know, shadow banning and you know their algorithm, you know, their their, their views have been going down and they're being a targeted, blah, 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 whatever it is. But there weren't they weren't satisfied with what reach they were getting on social media. But and, and then out of the blue, amongst all their other stuff, this this reel is put out there. And I did. I was like, basically, what the fuck? Like, number one, why would you post this? Without any context or any explanation, like there, like there's no, like what the hell is even going on here? But number two, why would you even post it anyway? Like yeah. what, what is it? It was even- brutal, man. That was a well, brutal I mean- video. And, and you know, what, what you're saying, like to put that into perspective for, for people that might not be tracking this, this thing's tumbling down a hill, right? And, and it's this, this bison. And the problem with that is when we're out there running around saying hunting is conservation, hunting is conservation. Oh, boom! Here comes By the, the way, bison. Watch this, blah, blah, watch blah. Yeah, this. watch this sucker roll to his death, or 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 the coyote get split in two by a three hundred wind mag, or or what you know, prairie, name or, your, or the name prairie dog explodes. Ex, yeah. exploding prairie dogs, exploding ostrich heads, you know, giraffes. Uh, you it doesn't matter. Name name your sensationalized video. When you're running around out there saying that hunting is conservation, it's going to take a non-hunter um, that looks at that as the, is going to is going to give you no credibility. They're going to look at that and be like, "What are you talking about? Hunting oh, is bullshit. conservation. You just fucking blew that thing in half and right. and and right. posted it so right. that you get a bunch more likes." You know, and, they're and, they're and, not going to take us serious. They're not going to take and, us serious. And that was that's a Jim, you nailed it. I mean, that's the thing is they're going to all they need to do. And this is what I've talked with Aaron, you know, numerous times about just take the just take your top one or your last 100. And I I, I say 100 because it's a good sample size and it's an easy mm-hmm. run. Just anybody's page. Take your your 100 posts and flip through them. You flip through them, you're going to get an idea of who that person is and, and what they think and what their value is and, and mm-hmm. their, you know, all that. And that people are going to, I, 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 I'm, I, I, let's not beat a dead horse. My point was on that, that, uh, post was, was like, dude, the only reason why you did this, because it's so far out of left field, it, it, it didn't even jive with what their brand normally is. Yeah, that is. is that was out of the blue for them. It, it, I was like, the only reason you did this is because you're disgruntled at the algorithm and you felt the need to use Instagram, the algorithm. You had to feed the algorithm to generate views, to get clicks, to get interaction and comments. You knew it was going to be sensational. What? Like, what you, is the point of the all algor- that? I, I don't you, understand that. What's that? What is the point of of like having to get more clicks and shit on on Instagram? I don't understand that. What what does that do for people? That for for different businesses, different models, the more exposure you have, maybe people will buy images, maybe people will buy your T-shirt, maybe people will. Oh, okay. They're paying for remember, real okay. okay. That, I guess that was a group, dumb question, man. That makes sense. This group, I... Yeah, this group is doing guided tours now, to where the more people see their stuff the more likely people are like, Ooh, I want to book them and I want to hire them to gotcha. go take me here. And so they need to have a hell of a lot of click throughs and a lot of people viewing it so that people see their stuff. So that that way people then go and buy and pay them for their services. Gotcha. See, I, I don't, and so I, I don't know. I have mixed thing. feelings with social media, man. Right. So and I was... this is, okay. So this is, this goes to Matt Ranella's entire premise about why, why he's all pissed off. Now, after that, we can, I, I, I'm going to disagree with, with what he wants to do and why and how and all the other things. But you, when you looked at the comments and you looked at the, the, the response from them, it's like, you know, again, John Kenneth Galbraith, he, uh, he was a progressive many years, decades ago. Famous for saying, when faced with the choice of changing one's mind or proving that there's no reason to do so, most everyone gets busy on the proof. Proof, yeah, yeah. And 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 that was the thing is is it was like 
Now, they took down the post, which I think was was right. You know, I, I don't know what comments came to mind or what I, I never saw it until uh, it was pulled down. But they t- they were they lashed out and were like, I, we don't give a sh- I'm not going to they lashed out about. We can post what we want and, and we're on a, we're on a bash about what we want, blah, 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 blah. We're going to do what we want. But, you know, those people that respectfully reached out, you know, we could see it's said. So we pulled it. I'm like, I, I don't care why you pulled it, but just good because A, it doesn't look good on your brand. B, it doesn't even fit within the portfolio of your brand. And C, it makes us look like a fucking bunch of like sadistic, just freaking yeah. assholes. And you're in Colorado and we're fucking losing hunting in Colorado because of that shit. Because if you, again, we go back to, we circle back to the Colorado thing. If you listen to the people that are, t- the com- the comments and the people that are talking about this from the wolf advocacy side, they are, they freaking hate Idaho, Wyoming and, and Montana hunters. You are out there hunting and you're trying to kill wolves. You are mm-hmm. fucking despicable. You are nothing more, m- nothing more than dog shit on the bottom of my shoe. So I'm going to scrape you off. I'm going to shove you in the fucking garbage can. I'm going to watch you burn. And I'm going to go to Colorado and I'm going to take control of Colorado wildlife management. And I'm going to show you, you want to fucking go kill wolves in Idaho? Fine. Fuck you. Colorado. I'm going to build my sanctuary in Colorado. You'll never fucking wolves will never be killed. And we're going to take control of ungulate management. Fuck you, Wyoming. Fuck you, Montana. Fuck you, Idaho. Colorado is the one that's going to take yeah. it in the fucking that, shorts. Yep. Yep. And that's, that's literally yeah, no, yeah, that's exactly. And, and you could tell that the, the proof is in the pudding. When you look at the draft management plan, that's exactly what well, it's like a big talk. fuck you to the Northern Rockies region. It yep. really is. Yep. There is no future. There is no future in Colorado for for wolf management through hunting and trapping. There just not is a, not even not under in, not, un, not under their control. Not under their control, and they have they currently have the control. Um, they so, they have so anyway. So check it out. I, so as you guys were talking, I'm listening. I'm going through this right, and and I was just curious. So I think I think Dan Staten, Elk Shape, uh. Dan, the fitness man. Dan, I think does a very good job. Okay. And I grabbed a guy that I think does good and I grabbed a guy that has uh, a good following and I know has context to his post. So I go and I look through. I already know what Dan's page looks like, but I went through and looked at it. Right. Respectful. Um, context is there. He's, he's showing his year long journey to every September, almost every single hunt the man does. Right. So then I go to a alleged, a known alleged industry poacher that has over four times the following. This is this is important. Okay. He has over four times the following of a man in who, in my opinion, is doing it fucking top notch. But why? Does this other guy who every single year is allegedly poaching year after year after year, whether that case sticks or not, allegedly poaching, he has four times more following than the man that's doing it the fucking right way. And he's showing us a year long journey and the other guy is pushing fucking nothing but product. And maybe, okay. And I'll, and I'll caveat a little bit. And maybe that's what Dan's doing too at Elk Shape, but. I I know that there's more to Dan than that, right? This yeah, is there's his way lifestyle. more that's to Dan he, than that. that uh, Dan, that's what he believes. I mean, but, obviously, Dan Dan makes a living at this, right? And right. So Dan, but I had to say it. Some of that. I but, had to say it because yeah. I got a caveat there because I don't want anybody um, saying, "Oh, you know, whatever." I had to say it, but there says something about our demographic when the guy that has over four times the following is oh. yes exactly jim right is yeah and it's not even about it's not even about that guy versus dan more about what the fuck is the demographic doing if this guy has four times more you go through his fucking page and you see some in my opinion some horrible nasty stupid fucking shit on that page and i don't even follow it and yeah. yes Allow me to provide this additional qualification of what you're saying. 
both of those individuals are Western public lands yes. individuals. Yes. We're not, we're not comparing, Apples uh, to oranges to, yeah. uh, I would just say it. I, we're not saying Bomar or, or right. some yeah, Eastern, yeah. Eastern whitetail guy that, no. that has, you know, obviously whitetails or, you know, so no. we're, this is an apples to apples comparison of two Western public lands DIY hardcore guys. And the reason I'm not saying the other one is because I don't support that shit, and I'm not going to have this podcast generate any traffic. Right, 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 right. So there's yeah, a and, reason, and, and there's no reason to demonize that. Them. There, there's no reason to demonize that part of it. But you're you're exactly right. It's the other part, like Dan Staten. Um, you know, he has a legitimate platform of showing people how to, you know, I don't know, do a thousand. Yeah, regardless of what he's showing them about <laughs> about the right. fitness and the and he shows the fitness, it, he shows the right. whole process to regardless help people get better. Of the business and, aspect on Dan, got game. everybody's got a business aspect. We've everybody's got a business aspect when right. when, when we're 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 in this community. For that reason, I mean, I, I'd be lying if I didn't have a business aspect. You guys have business aspects of this, and 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 there's nothing wrong with that, and and some marketing to go along with that. I right. I I have people I follow, and I want to see some of their marketing too, because I'm going to be a consumer. I mean, I've been a consumer of both of you guys, uh, and and so there's nothing wrong with what Dan's doing. He's just portraying no. it in a, in a professional way. No, and, I think that's what I'm saying. Job. I... I think uh, he it's does the other guy an exemplary that, job of representing us because he does it. Part. He does it without the sensationalization that right. takes place on that other page that you're referring to. And even and, if he even even if he did try to throw ten ounces of sensationalization into it, right? He has context in front of that entire post. Yeah, that exactly. Gives the story of what it took him to have that moment. So, Dan, if you want to sensationalize the motherfucker every now and again, brother, go ahead. Right. We have the context. And this is what Chris said. Without the context, like you like, what is that kill shot central? There's no fucking context. So if I'm just some jack, you know, I shouldn't say that. If I'm just some person stroll, you know, scrolling the post I sent you guys, if I saw that, I'd be like, you got to be. Well, these guys oh, yeah. are, you know it's, what yeah. I mean? Like it's what cold. in the actual what an actual fuck. Yeah. And again, this is the thing. And this is the other thing that I thought was, you know, uh, part of the reason why I was immediately. Uh, the other part of this, and I don't know if you guys want to get into this is, and, and I don't have the answer and it, it's going to be something I want to explore. Don't jump on it yet. I, I want to segue to it. The other, the other flip side is, is should we call people out on it? And then how do we call people on it? So I think it, 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 that should be an, it, 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 <laughs> and it, and it, hold on, because part of the reason why I, I commented on this, this post when you were referring to, yep. yeah, was people have to understand when you do a reel on Instagram and you copy and use audio that you're pulling from Instagram, when you post that reel, and and this is the thing. These guys that posted this know for, they know this. They they know that they know how to play it. So it wasn't like they didn't know this. But I'm telling you this: if you post a reel, it's gonna go into the real file folder, if you will, of Instagram, and Instagram will promote that outside of your community. They'll they'll they'll, they'll it gets put into it. If you use audio, especially quote unquote trending audio that you pull from Instagram, that is also going to go into that kitty. That's going to go into that file for all. And anybody that uses that audio that wants to go and pull that audio, when they click on that, because they're like, oh, that audio, they could be a, 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 a high school cheerleader that wants to get into baking novelty cakes and they he they're watching their media they're they're watching their instagram page and they hear a song in a reel and they're like "Ooh, that's a cool song i want to use that song as well you click on that song and bring instagram will show you a shit ton of uh, like a list of all the reels that have used that song so there's multiple different places no, where, 
Yeah. So there's multiple different places where if you post a reel, it's not going to your viewers. It's not even going to your community. It's going to be forced into the face of people that are wildly outside of your demographic. I want to, I want to chime in with, um, the question that you posed, uh, Chris about, you know, whether or not we should say stuff on that, uh, regarding like police, you know, police our own, so to speak. Uh, I think that that would make a great episode, um, in, in itself. And, and, with that, I'd I'd really like to get listener engagement with that. Um, where, oh, you got, I, and I don't know if I told you this, I got this, I I redid my website, guys, where people can actually go onto my website and they can they they push the little microphone icon and it sends me a voicemail to my email and it's in an MP3 file, and they could send that shit to me and we could play nice. it, nice, and then answer that kind of stuff. Um, nice. I, I, anyways, I, I think that that would be a good way to do, cause I, I gotta wrap it up tonight, but, uh, we're, we're three hours into the, I know, dude, you just got too much stamina for me. I, I, I don't know, like, uh, <laughs> three hours, three hours. Hey, so, as far that's as not what she said. That, that's not what she uh, said. <laughs> hey, so, so real quick, so real quick, going back to the who does, who decides what to post. I think if we, if we take, Dan's and the other gentleman's page that tells us who decides because if it's based on the clout, we'll call it right. The other guys, yeah. The the, the two hundred and sixty thousand people following a, a alleged poacher year after year. That's who's deciding. That that's where the decisions are being made. So how do we flip the switch and oh. and see that conversely? Sorry, I mean, I, I I know that everybody hates Matt Ranella, but I mean, Matt is he, stop clicking like on the when you see that shit, don't like it. Now this is the problem, okay? This is the this is, and and I even admitted this in my I, I don't remember if I I had it in my comment or not, but I it, I definitely thought it if I didn't write it. Just by me putting a comment, calling them out and saying what the fuck is driving their algorithm. Like, so it's, it's helping them. Yeah. So I think it's still important to chime in. Like, don't like them. If they, if they're repeat offenders, don't follow them. And if, if you see something, say something like, dude, the man, this is, but again, I made the, I made the point, I think it was with Aaron or on my podcast. If anybody has any doubts about this, about how, A, is it acceptable to call someone else? And this is, let me qualify. And this is, this is definitely something Aaron and I talked about. First and foremost, take care of your own, your own damn house. Like make sure you're got your shit squared away. Yeah. Now, none of us are perfect. And, and every now and then we slip up. That's fine. None of us are perfect, but make sure you got your shit squared away and your social media squared away. Number one. Number two, if you're going to call someone out. Oh, what the hell was? Oh, so here you go. Take a shot. I lost my train of thought. Um, hold on. Um, somebody, someone said it was a. They were they were going to make it into a drinking game. Every time I lost my train of thought, they they had to take a shot. <laughs> like, dude, I, I'd be shit <laughs> twenty minutes in. You're right. Yes, I, I hear you. Why you why you think or, or trying to remember that? You know, we're talking about these these brands and the, the product and stuff. And listening to one of you and Aaron's episode, and I was like, God dang it, Aaron. Um, and Aaron said, you know, in regards to like the companies and stuff, you know, look around, ask, you know, when you're, when you're going through that, ask yourself what they're doing, what they're doing positive on the landscape of hunting, uh, and how they're, how they're truly contributing, you know, to the demographic or the community or our way of life. And man, has that been eating my, my ever loving ass since I listened to that episode. I'm like, man, that, that's one of the best yeah, ones I've heard I, in a long time when it comes that to the was product a great quote. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. So Aaron, 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 I love, I love the way when you and Aaron get together, man, it's, it's, that's good stuff. You guys need to keep doing that. Um, well, we're, the, the plan is I gotta, he just got back. I think he's just back, got back. Anyway, plan is to at least do one a month. Um, yeah. or a month or, or more, but no, I, I'm back on track. So, and, and we, we talked about it. Aaron and I talked about, it. so when we're talking about calling, you know, cl- policing our own, a, make sure your shit's taken care of. B, if you're going to go over onto someone else's page, call them out 
and be specific about it. Be courteous. I mean, don't be a, a dickhead about it, but like, just, I mean, if you need to be forceful and be like, dude, what the fuck? That's, yeah. I, I think that's reasonable. And then just like bullet point articulate, like, like what the fuck? And here's why. And there's those people that, that have said that, well, that doesn't do anything. Oh, that doesn't change because they can just block your, okay. Yes, they can. But I think we even talked about it in a previous episode. If you, if you don't think people calling other people out on their bullshit can't change the culture, just go to a fishing community fishing. <laughs> in, in the fishing industry. Like someone can, like someone catches an, a freaking gargantuan tarpon on ultralight tackle out of a kayak. And, you know, like it's like yeah. some impossible feat. If that person grabs that fish and hauls it up onto the hull of the, the kayak and then lifts it up out of the water, like, Oh, this is great. No one is going to even give them two shits. No one's going to say good job. No one's going to say, how did you do that on light tackle? No, like the entire fishing community is going to be like, Hey, motherfucker, put the goddamn thing back in the water. You stupid son of a bitch. Like why do you, like they will just roast the shit out of them. You, you could have done some incredible feat. Yep. And if you fuck up and do something that's going to injure that fish or cause or put r- that fish at risk or do something even remotely illegal or it, the fish, you, they'll, they'll just roast them. And guess what? Oh, absolutely. Guess what? The culture of fishing has moved to where mm-hmm. the vast majority of people out there on the water are very conscious about what Brutally they're doing, why conscious. they're doing it, and what they're going to post. You know, like, and it's not it's not just about what they post either. Like they're conscious about how they're handling these fish. They're you know it, it's it's a thing. Like I'm guilty of that. that I didn't is the, know that's one the thing. Root. Somebody yes. hammered me over the way I was carrying a uh, a cutthroat one time uh, after I'd caught it on a fly rod. I didn't know, and so people hammered me in a fishing group I was in. This is years ago on Facebook. And ever since then, I have been super cautious as to how I handle these cutthroat. I make sure my hands are wet. I make sure I'm right above the water. You know, all this stuff to make sure I'm protecting the fish because I, you know, the, the river I was on was catch and release and uh, I want to respect that. And so anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it changes not just what they post, but it actually changes their behavior. And so I think it's good stuff, man. I, I, I love these conversations, guys. Well, you said you sounded like you were when, when you got. A, we, we've been talking about doing this for like, literally like the past two weeks or three weeks. I don't know. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been talking about, it. but but the, was it today or yesterday? You're like, I kind of really miss you guys. I want. I want to. I want to talk. <laughs> no, I said my life is dark and empty without you guys in it. I need. You, I, I need you back. And then no, I was. I, 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 I didn't know. Way, I, I I didn't know if it was gonna if it was gonna happen. We were having. You guys ever get these? Uh, you ever heard of a snow squall? Mm, oh these yeah, just blasts of snow. They come and it's windy. The snow like hits you in the face and it actually hurts. That's what we were, we we had a series of those today. Yeah, and we it was it was yeah, it was like affecting our internet and everything. And then you, as like I don't know, fifteen minutes before we hit record, the that the last squall moved out. And uh, I've got stars and a, and a bright moon out there right now. So um cleared right out, nice and clear, other than apparently it was too much weight on a, one of my trees because it came down on my uh, chicken coop. That's what that sound was. Oh. I went out and checked. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. just a little quit, guy didn't do any hogging damage. All the, quit hogging all the snow and send, the, send it our way. Man, if I could, if I could send, I, I need this snow gone, man. If I'm going to build a house, I need this snow gone. And it just like, it just keeps coming and piling on top of load it up and send oh. it our way, man. We need yeah. it. Yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to. I, I get a, I get a, uh, four inch PVC and run it Chris's way because we've been getting enough to send you away. We just, we, yeah. so just, just out of curiosity, I'll let you go. Um, uh, we, the land, one of the landowners I work with, there's, something called a uh, soil moisture probe and it's mm-hmm. it's a pretty pretty high tech piece of equipment it's a it's a long metal rod that has a ball bearing welded to the end and like, they use that for like agronomy and stuff don't they bingo look at you pulling out the pulling out the words at the at the 11th hour i yeah, heard and so, googled it while you were talking about it there you go <laughs> so, the soil probe and, and and it's six foot tall but if the soil is moist 
you can just push this thing right into the ground fairly easy. Yeah. But as soon as it hits dry, hard, you know, dry. So it, it, it stop. It's like you hit a concrete, you know, it, it just stops. So we just tested uh, a chunk of, of ground that should be representative of all the area. We have, we have at, we've just gone through two different snowstorms that were heavy, wet snows, which was good. And then it warmed up. We have 12 inches of moisture. That's it. What's that, the that norm? Was, What's the norm for this time of year? I don't know about this time of year. Well, it's too dry to have any permafrost. There's no, because there's oh. no moisture, but there's, there's no frozen ground. It's just dry. But I've literally watched him on an average moisture year take that soil probe and just push it right to the, I mean, put it, put his hand right to wow. the ground. Wow. You, That's you can just crazy, it, man. You just take it and just push it. It's just the way our soils are. So, that means we have mm. literally 12 inches of moist soil. And then after that, it's just hard rock. Dry as a bone. Dry as a bone. Man, that sucks. Oh, I hope yeah. that, I hope that changes for, for, uh, for you guys this coming year, man. Like, fingers crossed. It, fingers crossed. The Pacific, the Pacific Ocean is changing. It looks like we might get out of La Nina cycle. Hopefully yeah. it would be good if we got into an El Nino cycle. Say, because that usually. Nino sends moisture our way which uh, is, yeah I, you guys need that man i we we've just true. been getting pounded i i just it's crazy how how different you know regionally we're not it's not like we're that far away from each other but uh, god i might as well be in the amazon just the way the jet stream is yeah just jet streams stuff around I Those, mean, the that, they're feeding in utah is just crazy what are they doing in utah what did you say feeding mule deer in utah Doing oh yeah, oh yeah. They're they're like they've got. Uh, I I think they're close to like three hundred percent snowpack, uh, yeah. something like that. The ski resorts there, three of them are holding the top three snowpack levels in the entire world right now. Um, and, and you know we're we're we've been we're not at that point up here, but it's just like the nature of where my property is. We get this weird lake effect in the two mountain ranges that the property sits between. The cloud cover comes over the lake and just hangs on these mountains and just dumps on my property. So you go five miles down the road and there's no snow. But on my property, you think you were on the goddamn tundra. And, <laughs> and it's just, it, it's such a pain in the ass. I, I'm, I'm like, I, I might as well build an igloo instead of a house this year. Uh, cause I'm sick of living in this fifth wheel and, and, uh, it's you, just you a thought you got show. a good deal on that lot, didn't you? Uh, I didn't get a great deal. I didn't get, I didn't get, I, I got a pretty good deal, but there, there are, like there great. are with, with the amount of people that want to move to Idaho, there are no good deals anymore. I've looked. No, no, there's no, there's no good deal. So you guys, uh, you guys come up anytime though, and I'll subdivide this, this here parcel and, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make you deal. Cause right. I, you know, guy, you're going to have to get out of Colorado. It's going to turn he, into California. He's going to sell it for plowing services on there. <laughs> Plow, right. Plowing service. The plowing yeah. services uh, are not included, so you're going to have to kind of chip in on that one. I was I was I'll, cracking up watching <laughs> you on the plow. On well, I was going to say, <laughs> careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Man, my hand about froze off when I was w- filming that one. That was that, that was, was pretty good. That was pretty funny, man. Well, all right, guys, I uh, right, boys. I'm going to hit the stop record here, and uh, I appreciate that was a really good. Uh, I, I feel like we're we're making a lot of progress with these um, these episodes, and we need to just keep plugging away, guys. I really appreciate. At some it. point, we'll have to talk about hunting. Yeah, we will. We will. Yeah. I'm sure people are like, you're not even talking about hunting. The, the fun stuff. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Thank All you right, very much. Good time. Bet. You made it. That's the end of the episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure you're following us on Instagram at the Western Huntsman and write us a good review at Apple Podcasts. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Stay Western, and I'll see you on the mountain.